from? Now, now, brown cow. Wait, can I show you guys a song really quick? No, you can't. <laughs> okay, let me show you the no, song. No, you can't. Wait, wait. I'll unplug your mic if you start it. <laughs> so like, no, you can't unplug it. What are you gonna reach over here? <laughs> right, hold on, just a, just a little bit. The, okay, this will be our intro, maybe. Tell me what you guys. Okay, wait, hold on. Cool song. Bitch, I'm a cow. Bitch, I'm a cow. I am not a cat. I don't say meow. Bitch, I'm a cow. Bitch, I'm a cow. Bitch, I'm a cow. Bitch, I'm a cow. Go move. Go move, dude. No, but I think we should do a, a segment. Uh, cats or cows? Got milk, bitch. Got beef. Got beef. Got steak ho. Got stank ho. Got, <laughs> got steak ho. It's all about cows. All right, Mike, this is yeah, right. 30 to 45 seconds of our lives we'll never get back. So can we get the show no, on the road? Dude, he, she, she said something about old McDonald at one point. I would rather get a dirty Sanchez than continue to listen to this song. Listen. <laughs> you don't think it's funny a little bit? All right. Back right, to the sorry. show. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> I'll edit that out. I'm sorry, guys. I have a stupid ass song in my head now. <laughs> bitch, I'm a cow. <laughs> bitch, I'm a cow. I'm not a cat. I don't say meow. Go moo. Okay. Yeah, right. All right, let's actually start right now. Ready? <laughs> <laughs> no, I already did that, dude. <laughs> I'm fucking tired. Somebody else start it. I don't start shows. <laughs> <laughs> I don't start shows. Yeah, the shows start me. The start shows. They show start. I had a roommate. I had a roommate one time, and my, uh, he was like, "Here's the thing." When I first moved in with him, like two, day, two days in, he's like, "Here's the thing you're gonna learn about me is I just don't do dishes, bro. Like I just don't do dishes." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, dude, no, but for sure you're gonna though, because I'm not doing your fucking dishes." Dude. <laughs> he was like, "No, dude. I people like always they find out like I just don't do dishes." Like, like, bro, well, that's not chill to- then. <laughs> but like, uh, that's not. The fuck? You're like, bro, we're about to do a lot of paper plates. I don't I don't start shows. <laughs> That's the thing you'll fucking learn about me. Give it real quick. I start your charge. All right. Well, welcome back to the average like bro time. Welcome back. Fantasy football podcast. Okay, I'll start it. Ready? I'll I'll think of a good one. There's too many. You guys are both looking at me. It's so much pressure. <laughs> Should we call like, someone and have them start it for us? Okay. We're Three Can we and a half like in and trips? <laughs> I know you're listening to this trips. Can you just give us like a trendy like intro? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Make us something. a trendy D- intro, D- bro. D D J Average Bros making your fantasy wet. No. D D D D D D J. Your bros are average. S- oh, no, I was about to say second. <laughs> okay, just do do a normal. Welcome back. <laughs> okay. Like basic? No, yeah, you ready? Oh, I don't start shows, so. Okay, ready? Hi, hey guys. We're back. We're back. We're back. We're back. Speak up. Use your man voice. Okay, okay. All right, everyone. Welcome back to the Average Bros Fantasy Football Podcast. It's your boy T. It's Anthony. Oh, he forgot his name, and I'm Michael. <laughs> okay. Slight hesitation. Wasn't sure. Slight hesitation. So, okay. So, it's been a minute again. So, we're going to go over the week. Two matchups, correct? Correct, though. Correct, correct. All right, so week one <laughs> is in the books. You either love your team or you're in panic mode and you're trying to trade people or you're panic dropping players. Which a lot of people are doing. A lot of people well, are check doing. Those, check that Let activity them panic messages. drop players. Don't panic drop certain players. Example, Chris Hogan last year, people panic dropped him after the first week. He had one catch for four yards. I picked him up on the waivers that uh, going into that second week, and he he balled out those next couple weeks for me until he got hurt. I mean, he he did bad again this first week. He's probably gonna do bad again this week coming up. We'll talk about that. Don't panic. Hold on to him. If someone drops him, pick him up, stash him. And uh, even don't that, start him this even week, that, don't jump ahead to don't drop too much. It's okay to drop people that are worth dropping, 
but the, you'll see on I, I always check especially in the after the first week i check make sure i'm always checking the activity messages checking the transaction trends seeing why everybody's dropping because people will might go and pick up philip Lindsay, that other back and that showed up out of nowhere in denver and they're dropping guys that they shouldn't be they're dropping guys that are definitely running back starters on other teams that yeah, I agree. You got to well. you got to keep an eye on people who they're dropping because that's that's also important. You know, I've seen this guy. Someone dropped him in one of my leagues. Uh, Deshaun Watson dropped him and picked up Patrick Mahomes. Oh yeah, so for sure. I fucking picked up. I picked up Deshaun and I just put him on the claim. I mean, I I still don't know if I have him or yet or not, but I'm just like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, yeah, no. Like I understand Pat Mahomes had a really good week one, but like that doesn't mean shit, dude. Yeah, Deshaun dude. Watson actually sh- proved himself a little bit in the. Couple of games spread. What was it? Five games he played. But yeah, I mean, he probably would have been rookie of the year if he didn't get hurt right. realistically. So, but anyways, all right. So we're gonna jump into these matchups right away. Uh, starting with the Thursday night game, it's the Baltimore Ravens at the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, Vegas has them as a pick 'em. Vegas has them as a pick 'em. So one of the sleepers uh, that I had last week was Andy Dalton. If you're trying to stream a quarterback, I mean, for example, if you had Garoppolo when he was playing the the Vikings. If you wanted to try to stream a quarterback, Dalton was there. I think he put up a decent average stat line, nothing too crazy. And he was like two. He was like two twenty or something like that. For yeah, two. two touchdowns. And I mean, not too bad. Uh, <clears throat> I, I don't feel too confident starting Dalton this week. The Ravens' defense is the real deal, and uh, I think he was actually getting pressured pretty decent from the uh, Colts' defensive front. And the Colts' defensive front is not known for being a, a pass rushing defensive front, so. Now you're playing against the Ravens, who always have a really good defense, good pass rush. I'm worried for Dalton here. Yeah, Dalton's uh, someone you could probably bench or, or drop. Uh, <coughs> if you're stringing him for the week and you want to pick up someone else or start your, you know, if you sat your quarterback who had a bad matchup that week and started Dalton, um, and if you had Big Ben and started, Dal- uh, started Dalton instead, you could drop Dalton, put ba- Big Ben back in. Um, and he'll probably have a decent to crappy week, so you'll be able to stream him again in the future. So there's no need to keep him on your roster. Yeah, I'm not psyched to start either one of these quarterbacks in this game. Uh, so let's just jump right back into into the running backs. Mixon, he balled out. He played really good. Obviously, the Colts don't have a really good defense, but I mean, he kind of gave you everything you expected or everything you wanted from him. You know, he got it all. He got majority of the snaps, right? Yeah, his uh, snap count was he was at 76 percent last week. Um, when a running back seeing 76 percent, that's that's workhorse territory. That's you know, that's going to be in the top 10 percentages of, of running back uh, touches. Um, I know the Ravens shut down McCoy last week, but you're still starting mix. And that was just Nathan Peterman was just out there just getting murdered. Play yeah, the Bills play. could be the worst team in the league. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're firing up Joe Mixon. I mean, uh, even if this is a tough matchup for him, you know, he's still going to probably put up RB2 numbers. You know, he's going to get volume. Um, you know, there, this, this should be it's a Thursday night game, so it's a short turnaround, you know, uh, these games can get messy, sloppy. They can be low scoring. Look at last Thursday night. You know, it was a low scoring game. So he, he's going to be in the game script even if, if they're down because he catches the ball very well. He uh, was second in the team in targets and receptions and yards last week. Jesus. He's a month. Yeah, Mixon, probably RB2. I don't, I don't think he explodes. I mean, he could. You never know. But I don't think he explodes for an RB1 uh, status this week. The Ravens are pretty tough. But I think he's got a safe RB2 floor for you. Geo. I would keep Geo on the bench. Geo on the bench. Geo's kind of one of those players you kind of maybe hold him as a handcuff for Mixon. I'm starting to think. I like Geo, but he's just a bench guy for, for me right now, you know. I don't, I, I'm not willing to throw him out there, especially in this matchup. Yeah, one of the trends I noticed is I noticed last year, I believe I touched it. I don't, it was either discussed between us or I put it on the po- earlier podcast that um, it was a four or five game sample when both of them were healthy. And when they were both healthy, Mixon out touched him uh, significantly. And it looks like that trend's continuing this year. Uh, you know, week one, it was 42 snaps to 14 snaps. So if that's going to continue, you know, Geo's going to be, like Tyler said, basically someone you cuff, but you, you don't start. Yeah, okay. So you're starting up AJ Green. AJ Green, uh, fire him up. John Ross was another sleeper I had. He. Kind of bailed me out with that one catch for, for a touchdown, touchdown for three yards. You dropped but, uh, him in a league. I saw that. Yeah, because it just Cause I he's was a reading guy. that he's not getting too much. Yeah, he's only getting like I don't know. He was on the field for sixty five percent of snaps. He's basically as of right now, he's he seems to be you know, the preseason he looked like he might have been the number two option, but Boyd was on the field more than he was. Yeah. Boyd's probably the second read. Uh you can even argue that Mixon is is possibly gonna be the second read. I think he's uh, going to be heavily involved this year in the passing game, what it looks like. So John Ross, you're basically 
as of right now, until we see the snap count shoot up, you know, you're banking on that touchdown or big play. Yeah, it's like um, it's kind of like the same as uh, what's his name, Mike Wallace. Yeah, and they did actually target him twice in the red zone, so that is something to, you know, maybe they're going to be using him in the red zone, uh, you know, going forward. So that's something we'll keep an eye on. Yeah, I liked him. I like John Ross in that matchup last week against the Colts. That they, they have a terrible defense, and they give up the most air yards out of any team in the league, I think. And you have a speedster like him. I thought he could have had a shot where he breaks off a 50, 60, 70 yard touchdown catch, but I mean, a three yard touchdown catch is that's not what they drafted him to do. You know, he's no. a red zone guy, he's a field stretcher guy. So for him, he's on my bench, or if you want to drop him, I would probably drop him too. I mean, when are you really realistically going to play him? You know. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point too. That you, you you even said when I was thinking about picking up like a possible, I was trying to pick up like Mike Gillisley before week one even started, and I was looking at I had uh, like Robert Robert Woods, but I had it's kind of a deeper bench. And you looked at me and you're like, dude, okay, but honestly, when are you gonna realistically put Robert Woods in? Because my wide receiver set was just stacked. Yeah, you got stacked you know receivers I mean? in the league. So if you there, there is some times where it's it's okay to drop guys, especially guys like John Ross. It's yeah. just realistically, like you said, you're not gonna plug he, him in. He's more of a yeah. bench clogger at this point. He's yeah. like he's a name who's gonna have. He's, you're not gonna feel comfortable starting him as of right now. Um, and he's just going to sit on your bench and you could pick up someone else, you know, if you need a running back help or tight end help, or maybe you want to stack a defense for the next week or a quarterback streamer for the next week. You know, if Ross is someone that's going to sit on your bench, why have a spot that you're not going to use hold up when you can use someone else kind of like he's a player right now where you let him be someone else's problem. Yeah, definitely. All right. So for Eifert, uh, he made it through the game healthy. He's a shocker. Yeah. Yeah, Shocker. He made it through the game healthy. I guess he was on a pitch count. So he only played, I think, like a third of the snaps or maybe like 40% of the snaps. I think, would he have like three or four catches? Uh, yeah, I believe he had three catches for 40 something. Or he was like four for four or something like that. Three, Here, I'll pull it up four. right now. Uh, but yeah, he was on the field for 40% of the snaps. Uh, and he still, you know, he saw, t- he saw targets. He had three for 44 and he saw three targets. So he caught all his targets. Um, you know, it's, it's a sign in the right direction. Uh, you know, if you see Eifert's snap count start to shoot up, you know, maybe if he gets into the 60, 70 range, you know, um, you know, you might feel comfortable starting him at that point because he has a red zone threat. You know, he has had some big games. So let's let him stay healthy. You know, uh, I think if you're thin at tight end, he's someone to hold on to. I don't think you want to drop him. I think you he has potential to be, you know, he's showed top five potential. So, um, you know, I'd hold him if that snap count goes up and the targets go up, you know, he could be someone, you know, it, you know, you feel comfortable putting in week in, week out. How, how would you feel about playing him this week? Say if you had like a Delaney or a Greg Olson and, and you're struggling for a tight end, no one's yeah, really there, I've but you, you have Eifert, would you feel comfortable throwing him in there? I mean, I feel like for mo- some teams, he's kind of a must. You have to throw yeah, him in there. That's what it comes down kind to. Kind of praying it's, for that red zone touchdown almost yeah. maybe. Some teams are thin at tight end and it's, you know, it's, what uh, the tight end position gets ugly. It's, you know, it's, it comes down to basically you're, you're banking on a touchdown. Um, and Tyler Eifert is one of the best touchdown, you know, tight ends Big red zone guy, yeah. we've seen over the last few years. So, I mean, if you don't have a great option, you know, I'm not against it. So, yeah, yeah. If he's, if, yeah. if he's on the waiver wire and you need a tight end, I mean, go grab him and throw him. He's better than what most people are going to be out there, you know. Yeah, All right, he, so s- switching over to the Ravens side, uh, Alex Collins. I know you're big on Alex Collins. A lot of people would be big on Alex Collins and – he got you that touchdown early, and you, you might have thought, like, oh, man, here comes a big game. And then he kind of just – he was on the bench for the rest of the game. Yeah, game script kind of dictated that Alex Collins – you know, I went back and looked at some stuff, and he was pretty much – after the first half, he was borderline out. It was basically Kenneth Dixon and Buck Allen kind of taking the reins in the second half. Um, you know, this was a game where it was it was out of hand very quick. Um, you know, he was in there for 30% of snaps. I don't see that continuing, especially with Kenneth, Di- Kenneth Dixon uh, being on IR till I think week 10 or 11 now uh, at least. Um, you know, he did fumble. They kind of punished him, and it was kind of a little bit of game script. Um, he's someone where, you know, I'm kind of considering trying to target if, uh, you know, depending on the waiver situation, you know, if, uh, over the next, by tomorrow, we'll know those. Um, where I might try and buy low and see if I can get some kind of, you know, wide receiver two, low end, wide receiver three to see if I can pry Collins away from someone. Because uh, I think it was just game script. That game got out of hand in the first quarter. Uh, you know, there was no need to even, you know, have him out there for, you know, 30 plus carries and stuff like that. Yeah, that game was over as soon as they kicked the ball off. So <laughs> I think they came out. He scored his touchdown. He looked good so on that first that. drive. And then the coach was like, all right, sit on the bench. We're about to smack these niggas and pack it up and get out of here. So I, I, I turned around and I saw that uh, the game was like, I think it was like 30 to nothing. I was just like, what the yeah, that was that was. Uh, yeah. And then with the res- with the receivers here. Uh, you know, they, Crabtree scored, John Brown scored, Willie Sneed scored. 
Um, you know, the Baltimore stayed true to it. You know what they've done the last few years is they throw the ball a lot. They throw a lot of pass attempts. Um, you know, Crabtree got his touchdown. John Brown got his touchdown. I think this is a game where the picture wasn't painted too clear because it got out of hand so fast that it wasn't necessarily a competitive game. Yeah, it's hard to base your. It's, it's hard to base any type of stats off of this game just because it, it's no Ravens game throughout the rest of the season is going to be like this one. Yeah, no, no, this, you know, they, they got shellacked. Yeah, they just got. But that's what I mean. Is like you can't really be okay. Well, this guy, this you, you can't. Th- that's why you can't base. This Alex is like Collins a varsity versus a JV team, and you're kind of just going out there, and everyone's just like varsity versus balling freshman. out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ohio yeah, State versus Kent State. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So in this matchup, uh, you know, I feel comfortable if you have Crabtree. Uh, you know, you can start him. I think he's a wide receiver to play. Um, John Brown, uh, I think he's a flex play with some upside. Um, you know, he's, he had a couple touchdowns in preseason and continued with another touchdown. Um, he seems to be healthy. Um, you know, he is a big play guy too. He doesn't need a lot of targets to, you know, break a 50 yard, you know, touchdown catch. So if you're shooting for a flex with some upside, you know, it's at the, um, you're making a decision. Uh, I guess you could use John Brown as a flex play this week. Yeah. Crabtree wide receiver two. drum, uh, drum Brown, John Brown flex guy, maybe, uh, he is going to line up against Drake Kirkpatrick, who's a first-round cornerback. Uh, he's pretty good, so that might temper my expectations yeah. with him right there. But I mean, if you got to, you never know. I mean, he's one of those guys where it takes one play, and he, you know, he kind of makes your your day with that. So uh, for the tight ends right there, there's no real tight ends uh, to be starting on the Ravens. Just an interesting uh, stat or something to look at. Uh, the Ravens tight ends they had three tight ends catch passes last week uh, for a total of 13 targets amongst those tight ends. Uh, they have no Hayden Hurst yet because he's out with a foot injury. That's their first-round tight end that they drafted who should come back, and once he comes back, should take over the role as the primary uh, pass-catching tight end. He should be available on your waiver wire, too. Uh, and with the tight ends being so thin, with Delaney Walker going out, Greg Olson getting hurt, and a couple other players not playing that good, uh, if you want to go grab a Hayden Hurst and you want to stash him, I know me and Anthony, we just did in a deeper league. We, we, we stashed Hayden Hurst. I think when he comes back, he can come back and – the Ravens like to throw the ball to the tight ends. They've thrown the ball to the tight ends. I think it was – I looked at the stat. It was 385 pass attempts in the last two years to the tight end position. So that's – and that's amongst the tops in the league. So they like throwing it to the tight end. Hurst is a big guy. I think he's like 6'5", ran like a 4'5", 4'4", 40, something like that. Big, uh, strong hand. So just got to keep an eye on if you need a tight end. Uh, grab him, maybe stash him. Yeah, like Tyler, t- just let me touch on that real quick too. Uh you know, we grabbed him in a deeper bench league. If you're a short bench, you know, it, it might be a week or two uh, too early to stash him because you don't want to have uh, a roster spot tied up, you know, when you could be picking up some other guys right there still. Um, but if you have a deeper bench and you have spots to burn, you can hold someone. You know, he's ba- not a bad uh, guy to hold there. But if you don't have spots to burn, you know, I think it might be a week or two too early to grab him yet because um, he's not fully on the radar. No one's really going to grab him unless it's more of a deeper league. Um, you know, short benches, I think he's someone you could, like I said, if you have a couple spots to, to burn, then yeah. But if you don't, you know, try and find some players with, you know, uh, more weekly value for you. Yeah. Defense, you starting uh, Bengals defense? I'm, I don't feel comfortable starting the Bengals defense. Um, this, this actually works of a, an under game for me. Yeah. Kind of a division game. Yeah. Tough Tough game, just like a, that, a physical dude, game. Not not a lot of points. I feel being like scored. Ravens don't usually ever score as much as they did last last week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'd fire up the Ravens D if you have Ravens them. D. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they they can give anyone fits. They can go in there and you know sack Andy Dalton three four times. Uh, you know, it, it is in Baltimore too. <coughs> That's another thing. Um, I mean, Cincinnati no, it's in might Cincinnati. be Cincinnati. Oh, it is in Cincinnati. Yeah. yeah. It's in Cincinnati. I mean, <laughs> Cincinnati <laughs> might not be a bad streaming option if you if you want to, just because I mean I'm not really sold on Joe. Yeah, Blanco. if you don't have if you don't have a sexy option, uh, and it is the short week, uh, and you just kind of want to play like a safe defense, I think Cincinnati is a safe defense. Like we we've all three said, we don't think it's going to be a shootout. So if it's not going to be a shootout, you're going to have kind of uh, you know an average defensive score. Like there's uh, there's not too many streaming options I like this week. Uh, so I wouldn't mind Cincinnati if it's a defense you have and you just want to. You know, kind of play it safe. Definitely. All right. Why don't we uh, switch it on over to Sunday morning? We're going to go to Washington Redskins versus Indianapolis. It's in Washington. In Washington. In so Washington. AP, in Washington. he's back. Yeah. For now. Back yeah. for the day. I'm curious what you guys think because I have AP. And like, he's someone where I, I, I think he has another plus matchup coming into this week. 
And if he goes off again, I think he's someone I might sell high on yeah. if I had him. I don't have See, him in leagues. I'm, a, I'm in the spot where I'm where I don't I don't know if I should just try and trade him right now, if he's gonna have that one game thing like he did last year in Arizona, or yeah. if it's he's actually gonna show up. Yeah, I mean his body showed last year. Like even though he did look fresh when he got rest last year, he would come out and you know he would have a big game. But when he wasn't rested as much, you know it's different taking you know. When you're 26, 27 years old, you can take 20 hits, 25 hits in a game. But when you're right. 30, you know, 33, you know, I mean, I guess Frank Gore can, is going to live yeah. forever. So I'm, I might be flawed with my logic here. But, um, you know, it's different taking, you know, those those poundings week after week and trying to get back up and be as efficient as you were, yeah. you know, when you were 26, 27. Um, you know, Chris Thompson played 42 percent of snaps. So he was on the field in most passing down works. AP did catch like a 50 yard screen, but I. I believe that was the first time he went over 30 yards receiving, and uh, it, it's, it was a good chunk of games. Right. Um, so he's not going to get do too much in the passing game work. Um, this is where but this is a better match, but better matchup. It's a good matchup. Week. For like him I honestly didn't think how he was going to have anything. I benched him last week, which kind of actually lost me the game. I had him. In, get, hey, Mike, if you lost listen game, to this, uh, listen to Adam's podcast, podcast, and uh, we would have said. St- Dial up AP. Yeah, you're dialing up AP for sure this week. It's a plus matchup for him. Dude, we, okay, no, first of all, no. That's not <laughs> what we said. First of all, that's I don't even not remember what we said. We said flex option. I started AP. Bitch, no, you did not. Yes, I did. I lost in that league, so, but I still started him. He gave me 24 points. Oh, get the fuck out of Dodge. You did not start AP. I swear. Get the fuck out of Dodge? <laughs> hey, fucking send me a screenshot right now. I will. You won't. Anyway, so the, the thing with me, AP, is I, I wouldn't I wouldn't doubt him. I mean, the guy tore his ACL a couple years back. I know it's a couple years back, but he tore his ACL. He comes back and he rushes for what, like two thousand yards? Is that yeah, it was like some stupid. So he just. I mean, he's a yeah, he's f- future first ball first ballot Hall of Famer. I, I wouldn't. You put a stick bet in against his him is what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? They ran the ball thirty four times. He got twenty six of them. So I mean, they they gave him the lion share of the carries and. When I look back to the Redskins last year, like we had P Ryan in the league, me and Anthony, and uh, th- you know they're giving P Ryan the ball like twenty plus times a game. You know and he had a couple games where he was getting the ball twenty plus times, a hundred yards a game, and that offense wasn't very good. I mean, Terrell Pryor was a bum. Jordan Reed got hurt. Chris Chris Thompson got hurt halfway through it. And if P Ryan can get the ball twenty times and get a hundred yards on the ground, then I see no problem with AP if he's getting the ball twenty times a game that he can't put up. 80 to 100 yards a game. And then plus he's getting all the goal line carries. Um, yeah, Chris Thompson's on the field a lot. and He's going to get his you know 10 to 15 touches maybe. He's but obviously the, the pass catching your point back. Is but the touch, the, your point is, is the touches are there. The touches are there. I mean, he had 26 carries. Chris Thompson had five. And Rob Kelly had three. P. Ryan had zero. P. Ryan is P. Ryan is P. Ryan. Yeah, but this was also game script. The game got out of hand very fast. So that's something you got to take into consideration, too. Um, if Washington starts to trail, it's going to be a different scenario. AP isn't going to be out there rushing 25, 20, uh, 20 times. Do you think he, – but he's not going to trail to Indianapolis. They're not going to – uh, I mean, really good. I mean, anything's you know, happened, we'll see, you know, it's a wait Sunday, and see but. type of game. Uh, but I think it is still a plus matchup. I think he's a good play this week. Yeah, it's a good play. So we'll start um, him. Start Chris Thompson. Yeah, he's someone where you might want to fade in like uh, non favorable matchups where you know don't you know which, if he is back and he is somewhat AP, you know, you know, I I I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility he gets you a thousand yards in the ground. You know, I think that's uh, you know that's realistic for sure. But you know, if you have a week where the Redskins are playing, you know, they're a, a big underdog. You might want to look at AP more as like a flex that week, or if he's on a short week too. You know, maybe you know let's let's see the tendencies as as the years as the seasons go uh, weeks go on. You know, uh, you know if he has a heavy workload, if he dips the next game, if he gets rest, you know, let's pay attention to that as the year goes. Um, but I think the rest, as of right now, he looks like he's a solid RB two the rest of the way. I mean, he looked good. We were watching the game and he caught a pass or he ran around the corner and we were like, damn, Chris Thompson looks pretty good. He's pretty shifty. And then like they were like AP with the twelve yard run or something. And we're like, damn, that was AP like. Yeah. So he, he looked good. So I mean I, I like him starting, especially this week. Good matchup this week. So yeah. Yeah. Chris Thompson. Uh, Alex Smith, I think, say. is actually so sorry, go ahead. Chris Thompson, you're Chris Thompson, you're dialing him up. He came back and he you know, I did I'm kinda mad that I didn't draft him in more leagues because, you know, Chris Thompson came out and said that he wasn't feeling right and he didn't know if he was gonna be hundred percent until November. So but he came out and he he balled. I mean, and Alex Smith, he loves the dink and dunk it and Chris Thompson is going to get a ton of those catches. I think he's going to, I mean, I think he's a lock to get at least like three, four catches every single game. Yeah. Uh, I actually like Alex Smith as a top 10 quarterback play this week too. Um, this is a plus matchup for him. 
uh, the Colts, they were last week, you know, Andy Dalton went for, you know, we just touched on a 220 and two touchdowns. Uh, Alex Smith looked pretty good last week. The the backs make plays for him. He has a healthy Jordan Reed. Um, you know, I think he's someone where if you have a quarterback with a tough matchup, you can you can start Alex Smith this week. And he is on waiver wires, too. Um, let's move over to the receivers. Um, Jameson Crowder was kind of a disappointment uh, last week. Um, you know, Josh Doxon, Paul Richardson, no one really did anything. Uh, going into this week, do you feel comfortable with any of these guys? I would th- maybe throw Crowder into like my, a flex spot, but Richardson and Doxson, they're just – those guys have, haven't done it ever in the past, so I would never throw those guys – I would never feel confident throwing those guys in my lineup now. But Crowder, I mean, sometimes you just have a bad game. I, I, I would throw him in my flex. If you had to, I could throw him in my flex. Yeah, I think if, if I'm going to start one of the um, the receivers, you know, it's Crowder. He's, you know, as of right now, I think he's he's going to be a flex play. Alex Smith loves his running backs and tight ends, and that's where he kind of went in this game. And, you know, if Chris Thompson's going to keep making plays, if Jordan Reed's healthy, um, you know, we might see uh, limited targets to the receivers. Uh, it could be a season-long outlook. So uh, that game got out of hand kind of quick. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's a different case scenario. So let's see what happens this week. If it's a competitive game, you know, you know, maybe Crowder sees seven, eight targets. So if you're going to start one, you know, I think Crowder be the flex. Yeah. Uh, tight end Jordan Reed. You know, you're, he looked good last week. You yeah, know, he played fifty percent of snaps. Um, I think that's because he hasn't been the healthiest, and you know they want to ease him in a little I li- bit. I like him with Alex Smith there too. Yeah. Yeah, I like him. So I think the Redskins' offense is going to be consistently a good offense throughout the yeah. year. So yeah, Jordan Reed start him. All right. So let's move over to the Colts side. Um, Andrew Luck, first game back. I mean, threw the ball I mean, 750 good. times. Uh, I w- actually watched that game on a decent amount of snaps, and he still has his fastball. Um, I know he's not throwing deep yet. It could be a little bit of game script. Uh, it could be a little bit of the new coaching scheme because T.Y. Hilton wasn't in the slot as much as he was. Uh, he only played 25% of his snaps in the slot, where years prior he was about 50%. Um, so maybe that's a, a little bit of adjustment period. Um but, you know, I think this is an offense where Luck's going to be throwing 30 to 40 times a game. He might even have some games like last week where he goes over 40 if it's closer to the trailing. Um, you know, you're starting Luck. Jordan Wilkins, Naheem Himes. How do you feel about these guys this week? Uh, it's, I'm just keeping an eye on Marlon Mack. I mean, see what he's doing. He, I know he I think he practiced right in limited fashion. Yeah. So limited Naheem Himes could be a guy to keep an eye on because he had 12 targets, I think, last game. I mean, I know they were behind, so, that, you know, so he's – Actually, they were up for most of, most of the game. Actually, they kind of fell behind towards the end. But uh, nine nine catches, right, on t- twelve targets. Yeah, he had a he had a grip of catches, like two grips of this catches. This backfield is just a mess. It's kind of one I was talking about, in, you know, before you know we were in the draft season. That it's just one of those. I don't want to play Russian roulette, guessing which running back every week is going to be, you know, what which one does play. You know, Jordan Wilkins got the touchdown, but then it seems like Naheem Himes got all the passing work. Nine catches. I mean, if you're in PPR, that's nine catches is crazy good. Uh, but that's not even – Marlon Mack wasn't even there yet. So we'll see once Marlon Mack comes back how that works out. I mean, I guess those guys are like flex guys. Uh, yeah, desperate, flexes are desperate best. Flex. If, you're, if you're thinner RB, I, I, uh, if Mack's back, I would avoid the backfield completely. Yeah. Um, you know, Mack's someone where they tried to give Wilkins a shot to win the job. You know, he didn't really do anything impressive. Um, he was a starter going into this year. Hines did – they kind of put Hines in because Wilkins wasn't – uh, you know, as what Hines was in the passing game. And Mac did flash last year in the passing game, you know, with limited role with Gore. He showed some big plays. Um, I think this is going to be one of the lower rushing offenses in the league, so I think it kind of limits Mac's upside. But, you know, if he's on your waiver wire, I think he's someone you pick up because he could be, you know, the lead back in this. And if this, Andrew Luck is back and they have a lot of potential to score, you know, you might have some games in a positive game script where, you know, Mac's a good start. Um, so you know, I think he's someone you can grab if he's there. You know, I even consider trying to make a trade for one of my lower end receivers from Mac just to kind of see what happens. You know, um, see if he ends up being an RB two because he could be tied to a high scoring offense. Um, the receivers, um, Ty, you're dialing them up. Ryan Grant, eight catches on nine targets for 59 yards. So being PPR wise, we gave you was that 13.9 points. Yeah, solid, solid, solid game right there. Yeah, Ryan Grant, someone I. I uh, he had a good year in Washington, low key last year. I think he was kind of like low key underrated. He could have been the number one, depending on how you viewed it, as far as like yeah. statistics and stuff like that. Um, like I mentioned earlier, they're not moving Ty into the slot like they were as much last year. Uh, so if he sh- if he does have a little bit of struggles on the outside, Ryan Grant might actually, you know, end up being a a, a semi weekly flex play to 
you know, in certain matchups where you see uh, more of a shootout. So he's someone, I, if I have a deeper bench, I'm throwing on there to see what happens. That T.Y. moving to the outside a lot is something that's kind of got me a little worried about him. And, you know, his he's always been a PPR monster. So I kind of the move to the outside. I don't know if it was last week's scheme, but that's kind of worrying me a little bit with T.Y. Yeah, well, uh, Moncrief the last couple of years went with Luck was – Probably like a good flex guy, like low end uh, wide receiver too. So if Ryan Grant could be that, then yeah, for sure go pick him up and stash him. I mean, eight catches on nine targets—that's great pr- uh, productivity. We were talking about volume. That's that's volume at its best right there. Mister Mike, how do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, I'm, I'm like I'm wicked tired. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, man. I have Marlon Mack. I'm not playing him. I'm trying to. I'm honestly trying to trade him. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to package trade him. I, 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 like you said, I'm trying to avoid that headache. You know. <coughs> All right. So tight ends. Uh, you had Ebron and Jack Doyle both actually have pretty decent games last week. Ebron got in the end zone. Uh, Jack Doyle was uh, seven for sixty. He didn't score, but he played a lot more snaps than Ebron. He had a lot more targets. Um, I think you could fire up, you know, both of them this week if you have them. Yeah, yeah especially you, with the I tight end landscape being bo- thin. Uh, fire both these guys right here. You know, especially yeah, the tight you say in the tight ends kind of bleak right now with all the injuries and what's going on. So if you if you grabbed Ebron off the the waiver wire for some reason, I mean you could throw him in there. He's a red zone guy. I mean he's more of a receiver than a tight end. You know, he's just a big body. Doyle ten targets, third most out of tight ends last last week. So he's obviously a guy that Andrew Luck trusts. And they have uh, chemistry in the past. They too, have chemistry so. in the p- past. So Doyle could finish the top five tight end. Yeah, he has know, that if upside. He's, if he's especially get, in a PPR yeah, league. Yeah, especially in a PPR league. So you have to fire those guys up for sure. Next matchup. Definitely. Moving yeah. over. Uh, <clears throat> Let's go over to the Atlanta Falcons in Atlanta against the Carolina Panthers. The Carolina Panthers. I looked at this. Uh, I, I saw some stuff on Twitter. It was about Julio Jones having like a 300 yard game against Carolina. I think it was two years ago. It was two years ago. Yeah. Um, he has another uh, – if you look at the wide receiver cornerback matchups, I know Julio has. Let's see. Mr. Julio. He's plus <laughs> – that gets too loud. He's a uh, he's a 58% advantage this week versus his corner. Basically, what it's saying is Julio Jones is just going to – He should shit eat all again. over his life and eat as much as he wants. So you're I mean, starting Julio Jones. Dude, I, after last week and watching him, I'm, I'm back on. I'm on the Julio train. I had him two years ago. He pissed me off. <laughs> Be, besides this one game against Carolina, uh, but after last weekend, just seeing him play again, own, actually owning him, I'm back on the Julio train. All right, so we're starting Julio. Obviously, no questions asked. Yeah. Uh, Sanu and Ridley. Uh, Sanu was on the field more than Ridley. I think Ridley's dropped. I don't even bowl. remember seeing Ridley. Yeah, I think he had one target the whole yeah. game, I believe. Um, you know, do you feel comfortable with Sanu in this game? I see this being a little bit more of a, mm. it's no, a division I, battle kind of yeah, defensive game. Yeah, I, I would. I would. Those try. guys would be on my bench. Yeah, it's, it's got to be better. You could have easily picked a better receiver off the waiver wire yeah, and a new uh, a Godwin. I mean, there's there's plenty. There was a couple receivers. You know, Ryan Grant. I would feel more comfortable throwing out there that we just talked about. Yeah. Uh, I would keep those guys on the bench. Yeah. I mean, if you have room for Calvin Ridley, which it, which what I'm doing in one league is I'm just keeping him there just in case. But you know. Yeah, just hold on to him, see what yeah. happens. I, I want to see it before. Yeah, yeah, me too. Before I put him out I'm there. I'm not trying to drop that him. snap count. Just needs to go up though if we're going to see any kind of consistent production yeah. from him. Um, the tight end position, Austin Hooper. He was on the field for 84 percent of snaps. Uh, Saw a few targets. He's just dude. He's, he's just, just a guy. Moves like fucking molasses. He's, just a, guy, he's just a guy, dude. Yeah, uh, I just, I just don't. He doesn't seem like I'm, that athletic of a tight end to fucking. I mean, obviously he's in the NFL, but you know. uh, running backs <laughs> position. <laughs> yeah, running backs. Uh, I mean, if Defonte Freeman's out, you're definitely starting Tevin Coleman. He's a, he's a top fifteen play if Defonte, 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 Defonta, Defonte, Defonte Freeman. PPR too. Yeah. Um. You know, I think Tevin Coleman's a, a flex RB. Uh, you know, if Devontae Freeman's in, he's, uh, I think he might not be 100%. <coughs> so this could be a little bit more of a Tevin Coleman game trying to, you know, keep Devontae healthy going forward. If he's in, do you, uh, do you guys feel comfortable with Devontae Freeman this week? I think you I think you start him because he was one of your top three drafts. Yeah, I think if he's flex. playing, you got to play him. The, the Panthers' defense is pretty good, so he might not have a huge game again. But, I mean, we saw that game last week. He got two carries inside the five. He his, failed. And then he point? dropped a... Red zone pass inside the five, or well, he, it was overthrown, or, it was overthrown or something like that. So they were looking, they were trying to get him the ball inside the five three different times on one drive, actually. Um, 
I, I want. So you mean yeah, you got you got to play him, especially if you drafted him that high of capital. I mean, you, what are you going to do? Sit him on your bench? Yeah. yeah no. I mean, unless you went with like a. Uh, a, a one, two, three running back combo, you might be able to get away with him. Um, I mean, if you're thin at running back, you're starting him for sure. Um, I, I, what, how do you guys? I, really, I just want to go back to Devontae Freeman really quick. Like, how do you guys feel about him? Are you, like, if you have him in a league, are you worried about him? Are you trying to trade him away or what, what, what's going on? Just because, I mean, he had four on that first drive, he had four for four attempts in the red zone and failed it miserably. I mean, you're going up against Philly's defense, but. I would hold and, on to him. Yeah. I wouldn't. I wouldn't panic. It's one game. Uh, of, like, just keep an eye on his knee. See, like, see, see how he's doing. You know, if he's injured, just gotta keep an eye on that. Yeah, I mean, ask uh, if you if you want to trade for to Devontae. Trade, I'm trying to get. I'm trying to trade for Devontae in a lot. And see what the weeks. owner will take for it. I, yeah. You know, it doesn't hurt. Some they might be a little panicked and think this is going to be more exactly. of a Tevin Coleman, like so, a buy low candidate. Yeah, yeah, make a couple offers. If they if they bite, they bite. If you know, if they don't, they don't. Uh, if he has another bad week, you know, make another offer to them next week. I think once he's healthy and this offense gets its. Uh, it's footing underneath it. I think you're going to see, you know, some big games from Devontae Freeman. He is the red zone back. You know, they yeah. they showed they that last. The ball. I mean, they showed that last week. So, um, let's move over to the Carolina Panthers. You started Matt Ryan. Um, <laughs> see, here's the dilemma I have in one league. I have Cam Newton and Matt Ryan, and at first I was like, okay, I'm going to start Cam Newton. But then it's a six point passing. Uh, league and you get long touchdown bonuses and you if if you get to 300 yards you get a bonus. I was like, oh Matt Ryan at home, he's really good at home. Let me play Matt Ryan. But then I was looking at some stats and a stat that I found was he's failed to score and this is on standard four point passing touchdown leagues. But he's failed to score 17 points or more in seven of his last eight home games. So that that stat kind of skewed me and I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna go with Cam because at least he's got the rushing upside, mm-hmm. you know, and that ability. So. Yeah, I mean, I would start Cam over Matt Ryan. Uh, Matt Ryan, he's – I don't think in this week, but I'd view him as a top – I mean, he's tied to Julio, so you got to – there's some upside with as a play with him because, you know, Mike just touched on two. Julio had like 595 yards against him two years ago. Five. Um, he had like 300, <laughs> but it, was, it seemed like it was 595 yeah. yards and no oh, touchdowns. Could you imagine? Um, so he does have upside because he has Julio tied there. You know, if they connect on a bomb or two or, you know, a screen to Tevin Coleman um, – I think you can find better plays. I think I'd rather start, like I said, Alex Smith. You can get on the waiver wire. I'd be more comfortable starting Alex Smith than I would Matt Ryan. Um, you know, it's if you're if you're thin at quarterback. I mean, like you don't have a choice. You know, I you know I, I'm yeah. not basing too much off of last week. They did play Philly, which is a really tough defense. Um, they did. Yeah, there's good defense again though. They too. did lose two key defensive players. The Falcons did. So you know, Carolina might be able to score in this game. Um, and it's at Atlanta, so it's in the dome. So if Carolina's scoring, this could be a little higher. There's potential for some decent scoring. So yeah, I think he's a mid-range quarterback this week. Where you know, if he if you if he can get you two fifty and two, he's not going to lose you a week. And I think Matt Ryan's very capable with that at home this week. Yeah, hundred percent. All right, so jump into the Carolina Panthers start. Kill a cam, dialing him up. Uh, McCaffrey, he's a set it and forget it every week. Well, no Olsen. So I mean, McCaffrey could see a ton more targets. I think now that uh, Olson's not there. Are you looking at uh, Devin Funches possibly this week? Because once Olson went down last year, his stats shot up last year. Yeah, I think uh, he saw once Olson went out, it was a twenty-four percent target share. I believe it was. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and Devin Funches was actually really reliable down the stretch right there. Yeah, I would start Funches. I think Funches would be a good uh, flex play right here. Uh, maybe he's got some wide receiver two upside for you. Um, yeah, and they, DJ they, Moore they didn't do times. anything last week. I don't even think he got a catch. He was on the field for twenty five percent of snaps. Yeah, so so. It's, uh, if you're gonna if you're gonna start a receiver in this game, you know Devin Funches. Uh, I I, I kind of like him as a flex this week, actually. Yeah, I think so. With no Olsen there, I think they, they got to throw the ball to somebody, and they can't throw the ball to McCaffrey every play. Or can they? Bam, 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 bam. That was a sleeper, sleeper. DJ Moore, plug him in, plug him in. I don't know if that's a sleeper, but plug him in. You heard it here first. <laughs> Like Funches is a sleeper, actually. I don't think most people are saying, "Oh, I'm starting Devin Funches." Is my yeah, yeah. You know, he's but I think he he's got the scripts there for for a solid game for Devin Funches. This yeah, week for sure, for sure. Uh, tight end, I, I'd wait and see. You know, yeah, we don't it's even know Ian it's Thomas. Gonna... I think he's a rookie or second year tight end. Gotta yeah. kind of see how how it is, how that p- plays out. Yeah, he could be in there for passing down works for all we know, and maybe limited snaps. So wait and see it there. Uh, the defenses, you feel comfortable with any of the defenses um, here? No, probably not. Maybe the Panthers, if that's all you have, and like you're not trying to drop and get someone else. Maybe you get the Panthers, but 
I wouldn't start the Falcons, especially because they lost those. They lost two good players. On yeah, I, uh, I if I had to start one, I would. You know, like I said, you said if you don't want to drop Carolina's D, if you if you like them, uh, it's a mid range play to me. Uh, you know, it's you could do worse, you could do better. Um, you know, if you want to look at a streaming option, if you're not like set in stone, you know, uh, you know Chicago has a decent matchup. You might want to pick them up against Seattle. Um, but yeah, just mid range for me for both defenses. Yeah. <clears throat> All right, next yeah, game. Let's go over to next. Next game, let's go to Minnesota Vikings. I want to be Green next Bay. game. We, this is a divisional <laughs> game, boys. You never know what's gonna happen. <laughs> So this, I feel like a lot of these players kind of depend on Rodgers. If Rodgers is on the field, then you're, you're dialing up everyone. You're, you're starting them. On who? On Rodgers. 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 <laughs> trying to set you up. <laughs> Yo, bro, like, he fucking set you, and you forgot <laughs> how to fucking stand, bitch. Uh, I think Rodgers' knee injury is way more serious than they're trying to to let everyone else know. I mean, I think he... Maybe like a, like a MCL, LCL, PCL, whatever you know, one of those CLs, you know, what, that's not it the like ACL. MCL sprain or something. Um, yeah, but even then, it's like sprains a tear it, technically. So yeah, it's, it's like, like you're out like two well, to four dude, weeks what was, sometimes. What like was that injury? Days. Big Ben had an injury a couple years. ago. Meniscus. Like, yeah, I think his was a meniscus. Yeah. It could be. A, I mean, uh, it could be a meniscus for all we know for sure. Yeah, and that's there's what, something and wrong and with his knee. A hundred percent. Big Ben came back like two weeks later. So I'm I'm a little nervous. I have Rodgers in the league. Uh, actually, me and Anthony, we have Rodgers in the league, but we drafted Luck because he fell to us in like, like the, the tenth round, yeah, something like, like that. Like, so we don't want Luck. We didn't want Luck to being old Luck, and we're like have someone start him against us. We're like, yeah, hey, we're gonna take Luck here. Yeah, so we're we're gonna so swap yeah. Luck out for Rodgers this week. Uh, I have Rodgers in another league, and I'm kind of just keeping an eye on the situation, and I'm kind of leaning towards maybe even like streaming up a Case Keenum, just someone who's healthy at home yeah. against the Raiders, or I think he's amazing in Oakland, but. I, I kind of rather maybe start something like that instead of Rodgers with one leg against the Vikings defense. Uh, that's a that's a tough matchup a tough right de- there. And you always risk the re-injury. Let's just say you go Rodgers, go out there, and he's not feeling it. They could take him out in the first quarter. To, out, they, they, it's a full season. You don't want to lose Rodgers for the whole year trying to push it in week two. So he's kind of a risk reward with the tough defense. So I don't even think his rewards is as extreme as it would be on a, with a healthy Rodgers, you know. His reward might be 250 and two in this game. Maybe they try and run the ball a little more. Uh, I just I think with that knee, his ceiling's limited because he can't scramble like he normally can't does. Can't scramble. Make these big plays. Let his receivers kind of freestyle and get something open. So, uh, you know, I think this is a week where it sounds weird to say, but you can get away from Rodgers this week if you have some better options. Do they just Nathan Peterman sacrifice Deshaun Kaiser this week against and just say like, okay, Rogers, sit down one week, rest up the knee, Kaiser, get out there, human sacrifice Probably to the Vikings. This, not a divisional game, dude. No way. I mean, but like you were saying, it's only it's week one two. Week. Do you want to lose? Your, like Rogers is good and he makes a lot of big plays on the scramble and on the run. You know, he makes things happen. If he can't do that, and the Vikings have a really good pass rush, I mean, they have one of the best defenses in the league. If if he's on one leg hobbling around. I mean, and a lot of times, too, you know, if he, one knee's hurt, you're overcompensating on the other knee now, you know. So does that knee get hurt, too? I mean, look at Doug Baldwin, for for an example. Um, I, yeah. I, if I was them, I would maybe keep him out just this game. This is a good defense, and you don't want him to get hurt. Good defense, good offense. There's even the realm of possibility where Minnesota jumps out kind of early, and they're just like, Rodgers, sit down, which is, you know, what's what's rest you for, for the rest of the season? Right. You know, you don't want to – yeah, at the end of the day, you want to win the Super Bowl, and if you if you lose Rodgers in Week Two, you know we saw how bad they were last year once Rodgers went down. So um, they only had that one game, that one first game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <pretty bad. laughs> yeah. No, I was just thinking we, they had a pretty close game with uh, with Pittsburgh actually last year with Brett Hundley. In. Yeah, but then if Rodgers is is in, I mean, obviously you're probably going to try and start everyone else. But I mean, Devontae Adams is playing. Uh, Xavier, the roads are closed, so. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's a funny. tough matchup right there. Yo, dude, that was um, creative, bro. Hey, God, bro, your boys out here, bro. The fucking carbohydrates in my brain right now, bro, from the cold oh, brew. All right, so, so running many. backs, do you feel comfortable with Jamal Williams in this fuck matchup? No. no, don't touch a Green Bay. <laughs> Definitely base. not. If you have him, drop him. All yeah, this, them. Is, this is a tough matchup for Pack him. Pack and drop him. He, he didn't look that good last week either against uh, who they play? Uh, the Bears. Uh, the Bears. He could be in there a lot of snaps, though, because he actually is really good in pass protection. He made yeah. some key blocks. Um, 
So if you are in a PPR, though, I, I think he could be a flex if you're thin at running back. I think a lot of people are kind of thin at running back right now. There's a decent amount of squads. So if you are thin, I mean, he's going to be a volume guy. So, you know, maybe he gets into the end zone, you know, and it's, you know, he's a flex guy this week with a tough matchup. So don't expect these, you know, don't expect a massive game out of him this week. Um, Ty, you're benching Ty. Uh, I think at this point we didn't see much from him last week. Yeah. So um, I couldn't see that fucking game because the pole was in the way. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so if Rodgers, Rodgers is, let's do this. If Rodgers is not healthy, I think you're still def- starting Devontae Adams, unless you have some really good options. But, yeah. Um, let's play this as if Rodgers is healthy. You, you know, you're firing up Adams. You playing Cobb or Allison in this matchup? Um, I think after the week Cobb had, a lot of people are going to want to play him. And I think you might have to in your flex. But an interesting stat that I came upon just looking at some stuff is in 10 career games against the Vikings, he, Randall Cobb has never had more than 62 yards in a game. Interesting. So that's just an interesting stat. Oh, I mean, like, 62 he yards. Blew up, that's only 6.2 points. He blew up that points. last game. He had that 75-yard touchdown that kind of just a blo- I, like, almost like a broken over. coverage. You know, yeah, skewed skewed the stat line. Um, so kind of try and get away from him if you can. Just kind of, yeah. If you have some better options, don't think, oh, Cobb, he blew up. Let me play him. Uh, never more than 62 yards in a game against the Vikings. And with a half hobbled Aaron Rodgers or maybe even a Kaiser, uh, I don't know. Maybe look somewhere else if I have better options. All right. Uh, tight end Jimmy Graham. I mean, you drafted you, you him. You I, think kinda, yeah. I think you're kind of starting with this point because yeah, you drafted you him. So, people, uh, are so, people were so high on Jimmy Graham. I get it, but... You know, like, and you know, Tyler did like him. I was against him, but it was just there was, the draft price was high. Is kind of what yeah, we, t- we touched on. And he, you know, even he admitted because he liked him. But the draft price was so high, so yeah. you did waste a high tight end pick. You know, and you got to you got to kind of roll with the Plug punches at this yeah. point, especially if it's so thin. Yeah. Um, you know, you start in, uh, Minnesota's defense. I think I think you can start Minnesota's yeah, defense. Yeah, start Minnesota's I'm defense. About to, I'm about to pick Minnesota's defense was on the waiver in, in one of my leagues, so I'm oh, picking yeah, that up. Oh, yeah, for sure, easily. pick them up. Yeah. I was like, I don't even care if this matchup's kind of. No, I mean, look at the Bears. I mean, no one wanted to play the Bears, and the Bears were one of the best defenses last week. Yeah. So. All right, so Minnesota, uh, you're starting uh, Kirk Cousins this week. Yeah. Sure, that that defense definitely. is not very good. I mean, Trubisky just kind of uh, did some damage against them. <laughs> Yeah, bro, you unplugged all of us. <laughs> Did I? <laughs> yeah, I can't hear we're shit. We're at a temporary malfunction, but we can still, we're still recording. So. Yeah, everything's um, still going. Dalvin Cook, uh, you're firing up Dalvin Cook this week. Uh, I know he was supposed to be on some kind of pitch count last week, but that pitch count was 80% of the snaps. Um, so if that was a pitch count, then uh, I'm curious to see what not a pitch count is, you know, because um, – yeah, that was I was surprised he played. He was on the field that much. You know, he was 57 compared to Latavius Murray's 14 snaps. Um, if that's a trend that continues, Dalvin Cook's going to be a, a strong RB1 this year. Um, Latavius Murray, I don't think you're starting him in this game. No, Latavius is just a bench guy. He's kind of a handcuff to Cook. I think you're you're starting everyone on the Vikings. You're starting yeah. Cousins, Diggs, Thielen, Rudolph. Uh, Rudolph kind of bailed. Me out in a lot of leagues, I've Rudolph in a lot of leagues, and everyone else out who has him with that one catch, 11 yards, and a touchdown. <laughs> he only had two targets, but um, if you saw an article that I wrote on the Average Bros uh, Instagram, is uh, he's a big red zone guy. I mean, he, he's a guy they look for in the red zone, so I wasn't surprised to see that he got a red zone touchdown there. You I would like to see him more involved in the passing game in the future, but. You're starting Rudolph or Ingram this week? If you have both guys. Who are the Giants playing? Uh, Dallas. Dallas. I'd start Ingram. I'd start Ingram as well. Uh, if you had Ingram or Rudolph, yeah, I'd start yeah Ingram. I'm playing Ingram. Would you start Jared? Because I have Co- both those guys on one team. Jared Cook, the, the hotness, or would you start Rudolph? I start Jared Cook just because the matchup is similar to the matchup they had against the Rams. I agree with that too. Uh, same here, Mike. Cook or uh, Rudolph? Uh, I'm kind of fucking pissed because Cook, Cook scored a shit ton against me. So. <laughs> So you're starting Rudolph? So I don't, yeah, I'd probably go Rudolph. <laughs> Great just logic. Very, just a very anecdotal, d- don't follow my fucking train of thought. All right, so he's, he's, I think he's still a top 10 play. But there's I mean, yeah, some you, guys where, you know, maybe in your dilemma, you yeah, know, yeah. between these two. So I think it's, uh, you know, two guys we kind of gave you a, a choice over. Yeah. Want right. to move on to the next All game? Right, Let's next go next, next matchup. Chargers. Against our good old Buffalo Bills. Buffalo, Buffalo Bills, Bills are at home. It's not winter time. They're not rushing through the snow like last year. So, <laughs> uh, so I think Nathan Peterman went to the front office and was like, "Please, don't put me out there again." <laughs> like Nathan, you're 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 the sacrifice. You, you could go out there yeah, and die for sacrifice. Die for our future. 
Yeah, no, they like yeah. we'll send your family, you know, checks every week for the rest of the remainder of poor well. guy. <laughs> uh, How but, was he in the league? First dude, you know, of all? I was talking. Okay, wait, yeah, he's, I was, a, he's I was making millions to, of dollars, dude. I was talking. He is fucking atrocious, bro. I and was talking to a Bills t- fan, and he was telling me he's like, dude, he looks really good in college. He he actually is like not a bad quarterback. He just can't handle the speed of the NFL. The NFL is just too fucking fast for him. He well, just that, can't handle it. Like, and the two games they put him in, a lot of quarterbacks. Been, the two games they put him in has been Baltimore, like one of the nastiest defense in the Chargers last year Ooh, when they had Bosa. Really so, I mean, yeah, he hasn't looked good, but, I mean, his first two starts have been against, uh, like, like elite defenses yeah, 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 with limited is. weapons. I mean, you had yeah, Kelvin Benjamin and, you know, dump off to Shady. He doesn't have the weapons. Or the line this year is terrible. They lost three starting linemen. So, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think a lot of quarterbacks wouldn't have succeeded in this this scenario. Yeah. Minus really Tyrod really Taylor. Quick, this isn't fantasy advice, but I have Chargers on my pick them. For my survival, I think I'm just gonna follow the Buffalo Bills <laughs> schedule it, yeah. and just, pick <laughs> just against them it, yeah. every week. Dude. Mike's uh, pick 'em strategy of the week. <laughs> <laughs> Who are the Bills playing? Yeah. All right, start them. <laughs> yeah, truly, dude. That's what I was like about that's to take the strategy. Eagles like against that. the Bucks, but then after last week with the fucking Saints, I'm just like, oh, dude, I don't yeah, know. There's, good, there's three, three weeks though where they play their division opponents. Who who are you gonna pick those weeks? Uh, th- I mean, I can only pick them once, but I suppose I'll just. Pick a ball once. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fucking. All right, so let's move on to this. Uh, Josh Allen starting, so uh, there's a glimmer of hope for you know Shady and maybe Kelvin Benjamin. Uh, I think you're benching Benjamin. I think Shady's basically the only one to start. Yeah, I think the up. only person you're playing here is Shady. He he didn't. He put up a stinker last week, but that's because they were getting stinker. smacked and they didn't want him to get hurt. There was no reason to put him out there and have him get beat up and banged up against that that Ravens defense. Uh, yeah, he's he, on some. He's the only guy you're playing. I, some, I don't feel comfortable starting Kelvin Benjamin, especially going up against no. Casey Hayward, who's one of the best cover corners in the league, and he, and he shadows a lot of the times too. So shady, someone I'm trying to target a little bit because I've seen him on some people's benches. Um, you know, if he's on someone's bench, you know, make a make a crap, make a decent offer of someone who maybe had a big game by luck, um, and you know, try and pry shady off. You know, he could be a weekly flex for you. Maybe he's, he's not, I don't think he's gonna be the old shady in this offense, but. With volume wise and necessity, he's going to be, you know, a weekly back end RB two and you know at least a weekly flex play. And if you can get him for someone on your bench, like why not shoot for it? Yeah. Uh, the other side of the ball, who's 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 the Chargers? Who's Dave? Chargers. Play? You're starting everybody. Go Chargers, go. <laughs> you're starting the Chargers D. You're starting Philip Rivers. You're starting Keenan Allen. You're starting Melvin Gordon. I could even say you could start Austin Eckler as a flex because this might get out of you, hand. Yeah, you might start Austin Eckler as a flex. I like Mike Williams, too, as a flex possibility. Uh, he, he had a pretty solid game. Pretty solid game. And yeah. Tyrell Williams had a bad game, so I, I think, think they kind Williams of separated them. Like 12 yeah. fantasy and PPR. Yeah, and so did Travis Benjamin. They both made key drops that cost them actually the you know potentially the, the game that week. Yeah. I think Tyrell dropped two touchdowns. Or I know he had two drop passes. Benjamin dropped a deep pass, so... Uh, this might be a chance for uh, Michael Williams to establish himself. If he's there, uh, he's a guy I don't mind picking up. And yeah, kinda... if he's on the waiver wire, go grab him and just you know stash him. I mean, like I said, he might even be a good flex guy this week. Yeah, throw in there. Yeah, Gates. I mean, uh, Gates, he... I wouldn't play. You're just hoping for a touchdown. You're if you're starting Gates, if you're just like, hey, I just want a touchdown, and you know, Gates, then go ahead. Yeah, I saw it's, Gates was only on the field for 32 of the 73 offensive plays, and he only had three targets in those 32 snaps that he was on the field. So yeah. that's that's about ten percent, nine percent of the time he was on the field, he got a he got a target. That's yeah. not very good. I mean, but if you want to base percentages of chances to score a touchdown, D- Gates is probably one of the better tight ends for that. So if you're just hoping for a tight end, that, then you know that's your guy. Might as well move it on to the next one. Moving. Let's, let's go over to the Texans at Tennessee. Picking up some steam over here. We're moving. Moving quick, baby. Uh, so Tennessee. I'm so, pulling up some numbers. So Texans. Start Watson this week. Don't drop him like whoever that idiot was in Mike's <laughs> for Pat league. Ma- dude, for Pat Mahomes. I mean, dude. I guess you want to get Mahomes, Bro, grab him, but what you was should your keep Mah- both those Mahomes, guys, and you yeah. could a matchup based. That would have been a good one, too. Combo Bro, I've seen that. It's kind of scary when you look at it. Yeah. On the other side, you're like, ooh. Dude, this guy has well, potential. Your point, like, your point too, because uh, I actually I didn't, I didn't catch. Uh, I was kind of drunk, honestly. But I didn't catch some of the Chiefs game. But you were talking about uh, so two of those Tyreek Hill touchdowns were just like shuffle passes so it's not really even like pat mahomes either. yeah that's you know i think he has another good matchup this week but you know don't i think it's don't go balls to the wall over mahomes yet because you know if he the shovel pass where he just tosses the ball 
four inches away from his chest. It's a handoff. A, it's a handoff. But technically, the reason the teams do it is because if the guy drops it, it's an incomplete pass, not a fumble. Yeah. So that's so, why teams are running it. But yeah, anyways. But I mean, right. if you take those two away, game. yeah, the numbers are kind of yeah. they're different for so sure. So the Texans, Watson, I, he had a bad game, but it's his first game back and playing in Gillette at you know in New England. That's a tough game to come back yeah. on. Yeah. I mean, Bill Belichick had he had all so many weeks to, get, to, to prepare for this yeah. guy. First game back from his ACL. Um, I think he comes back in this game and plays a little bit better, and he, and he does. He has a good game. Yeah, and if Will Fuller comes back, I think that only uh, takes his upside up a little higher. So you know, hundred percent. You know, if, you 100%. know, watch that too. He's been practicing, right? He's uh, he's been limited. Limited. So uh, Lamar Miller, you're starting in this game. Um, uh, receivers, you're starting DeAndre Hopkins. I don't think you're really looking at the other guys as any options over here. Um, uh, if Ryan, I mean. Ryan Griffin was a tight end who saw the most targets, but it was a three. Yeah. You know, these tight ends were all on the field. I think you could probably find someone better. He did see five targets for a uh, whopping zero catches for a total of zero yards, <laughs> for a total of zero touchdowns, for a total of zero points. <laughs> <laughs> so you're starting your studs on the Texans. Start the studs uh, when it comes to this. Defense? You're starting Texans defense? Yeah. Uh, I think Mariota's, Mariota's got a little bit of the LBU. LBU. Elbow issues, so we don't even know if he's going to be out there yet. Um, I'm just still not sold well, on Mariota in sorry. general, to be honest with you. So, uh, I mean, you got Watt and Clowney coming at you, and then you got Merciless also. I mean, they got they have a good defense all around. So, yeah, I think it's the top ten option this week. I think yeah. they're a solid option. Um, let's move over to uh, the, the Mariota team. I, I, don't, I wouldn't feel <laughs> comfortable playing him. <laughs> His elbow is kind of fucked. I think he's he's still questionable right now, though, right? Yeah, he's so questionable. I mean, if Blank Gabbert's out there, then that's just it's you rough. sure you're not, dude. I'm not. I mean, I I, I picked him up as a flex play because I had Big Ben and I knew he was going to probably eat it the first week out out of not in Heinz Field. Uh, yeah, I dropped Mariota. <laughs> I picked Ben right back up. <laughs> nice. Uh, so Deion Lewis and Derrick Henry. Who do you who do you like of the two this week? Um, I think it's Deion Lewis. Yeah. I've just never been a big Henry guy. He's just I don't know. He's more of a plunger to me. He's, he's. I, I watched him on the field, and the thing I Derek, he's he's a massive dude. And when you saw the, there was a holding play where he took like a fifty yard run and um, took it to the house. He just, he's like one of those guys to me where like, if he has a hole and no one touches him, he'll go to the house. Yeah. But if you get, he's so huge and he gets taken down by arm tackles and goes down in first contact so much, it's, you know, it's. It's almost like baffling in a sense. Uh, you know, Deion Lewis scored the ru- rushing touchdown, I believe, last week. Yeah. You know, Deion mm-hmm. Lewis is just a better just runner better. when you watch the eyes. And he's a pass catcher on top of this. Uh, I'm If I'm a Henry owner, I'm a little worried that this is going to be a DeMarco Murray, Derrick Henry scenario all over again, except Deion Lewis is DeMarco Murray, and he's going to be the back seat. Um you know, I feel more comfortable with Deion Lewis this week and maybe even going forward unless it's a game where you see the Titans blowing out their opponent. So, and as of right now, they're not looking very good. So I don't see that to, you know, if I'm a Henry owner, I'm kind of a little worried right now, to be honest. Yeah, Henry was the guy that I was fading in every single one of my drafts because you Me could too. get Deion Lewis three rounds later. We and, all did. And he's yeah. just... And we you know, told you guys, too. <laughs> and we did. We did. We literally said, we said did. do not touch Take Derrick Henry. Henry. So... Yeah. Now that you're listening, you should fucking not even have him on your team, so we shouldn't even be talking about him. <laughs> so Henry, though, he had uh, 13 fewer touches, and he saw 29 fewer snaps than Lewis. He also had – Henry only had one target, and Deion Lewis had eight targets. So I mean, it just shows you how much more they're using Deion Lewis, you know. And imagine now if they're in games where they're behind, I can't imagine them having Henry out there when they're down two touchdowns, you know. Yeah, I'm considering trying to buy Dion Lewis while I, while I can because I think if he has another good week, the owners of Dion Lewis are going to be like, "Nah, I don't want to get rid of this guy." Um, I think it's just, I think Dion Lewis is going to be uh, more of a Demarco Murray, like I just said, and the Derrick Henry play the back seat. So I might try and get him while I can. They're thinking, "Oh, it's the Dolphins. The Dolphins suck." You know, he, he might have scored and got lucky. The game was weird. So he's someone I'm actually trying to you know work a trade for as solid flex. Uh, RB2 weekly, because I think that's going to be what De- uh, Deion Lewis is. Uh, Corey Davis, I think he's the only receiver you can feel comfortable starting. He had 13 targets last week, 6 for 60-something. And if it wasn't for Miami's first-round pick, uh, humble brag, Minka Fitzpatrick coming in and tackling about the half-yard line, he oh, would have yeah. had a touchdown as well. So, um, you know, Tarjay Sharp was out in the field, you know, didn't do much. 
Rashard Matthews was out there 52% of snaps. The loss of Delaney is only going to make Corey Davis more of a necessity. Um, so I think he's a nice uh, wide receiver to, to play this week. Yeah, he's, of he's a guy who's just going to get a ton of volume now that Delaney's gone. I mean, Tajay Sharp is no one. Taiwan Taylor, he's made a couple targets here and there. Rashard Matthews didn't look like he was healthy. I know yeah. he's been battling some type of injury, I think it was. Um, yeah, I think Corey Davis, you, you got to just start him every week because the volume is going to be there. He, I think he, he could be a guy who gets 10-plus targets every yeah. single week. I could see him having one of those Amari Cooper first two seasons where he falls into 130, 35 targets just because there's necessity for it. And, you know, he gets you not the b- hugest year, but he might get 1,000 yards, 70 catches, and, you know, uh, six, seven touchdowns. I think he could have a solid year, you know, just based off of there's no one else and the need to feed him through the passing game. Yeah. He could be a guy, actually, I'd be maybe, maybe try to target, you know, if I'm trying to look for, like, a, a a good wide receiver, too, maybe. Yeah. You want to move on? Yeah, John o. Smith's the tight end. I mean, if Delaney Walker went down, grab him, hold him, but you're not starting him this week. Yeah, just yeah, keep an eye on John o. Smith uh, for the tight end position there in Tennessee. All right, let's move on to the Pittsburgh Steelers at Heinz Field. Oh, fucking baby. Big Ben. I don't give a fuck so what So, first off, says. I just want to say, Mike, go fuck yourself. Because I was, did you guys I, win, did you guys win last week? Uh, it was a close game. <laughs> <laughs> They're still trying to figure out yeah. the results. Yeah, does it? Uh, yeah, dude. I'm lost for words here. I don't know, man. It was fun. But no, so yeah, I have Aaron Rodgers, and like I was saying, I'm I'm not I'm not 100 confident starting him this week. So I was looking at quarterbacks to pick up on the waiver wire, and there's Big Ben, and I'm like, awesome, Big Ben. He's at home this week against the Chiefs. I think this is a shootout game. I think Big Ben. Actually, a bold prediction I can make is I think Big Ben finishes as a QB1 this week. I think he has a monster game. And I was like, let me put a little waiver claim in for Ben here, and I'll just throw him in. I won't even have to worry about Rodgers. Who gets Big Ben? You fuck do, Mike. Him, Mike dude. Not me. <laughs> dude, dude so fuck honestly, you. fuck that guy, dude. dude. <laughs> oh, wait. Fuck, That's dude, such dude. a homer pick, bro. I know. But <laughs> I, but you know what, man? I've had Ben at, like the pa- every year that I've played fantasy. I, I always have Ben in some leagues, and I do. I just play the home road splits. And it works, man. Every I mean, year. it's a real and thing. Every I, year, I think it's a real and thing. And every yeah. year, don't listen to all. Everybody always says, oh, Big Ben, they drafted these quarterbacks. Oh, Big Ben this, Big Ben that. Like He's he's old, all this shit. And, but, but guess what? When he comes at home, he throws and he plays games. And he fucking makes touchdowns, bro. <laughs> bro, that guy <laughs> fucks. Even yeah. if the girl's not okay, willing. Okay, <laughs> chill. In a lot chill. Of, <laughs> this is what say. Chill. All right, so you're, you're firing up everybody in this matchup. We can probably make this matchup pretty quick. You're starting Big Ben. You're starting Con. You're starting Brown. Juju, wide receiver two this week. You're starting him. Uh, uh, James Washington wasn't really out at yeah, all. Yeah, I'd stay he away from those guys. Yeah, 13% of snaps. But I'm just saying he wasn't really there. Jesse James played. Uh, I don't think Vince McDonald even lined up at all. If Vance McDonald doesn't play, I think Jesse James actually might be a decent yeah, tight end start this yeah. week. Yeah, he's de- he definitely is. He, he'll get a couple of receptions for you. Definitely. Yeah, if you don't have any of those top 10 options and you're scrambling, you know, I think you could you could do worse than Jesse James, that's for sure. And he's definitely a good red zone uh, for yeah. a little bit. And then let's move over to KC side. I mean, you're starting Patrick Mahomes. I don't think you're benching him after last week. Yeah, uh, he might shovel past another one to Tyreek for another 90 yards. Uh, this, this could be a shootout game. This could this be like could a 40 to 40 make, yard. That, in my opinion, I think yeah. Kareem Hunt bounces back here. These defenses aren't the greatest yeah. defenses. They, yeah, we've uh, Pittsburgh's definitely focused on their O line as of recently. They. Yeah, we drafted a couple guys like Terrell Edmonds as a safety and stuff like that. But uh, T.J. Watt is the only defensive guy there, really. Yeah, you know. Yeah, see, if, uh, Cream Hunt's a guy where I would see if someone's on tilt with Cream Hunt. See if someone's kind of panicking where oh, this is gonna be. Dude, dude I'm kind Mahomes of is here. Panicking. Yeah, I mean, see, make some offers for Hunt. You know, I just see what you can get. He's a guy where you're kind of buy. I think he's a good buy low after the first yeah, week. Yeah, definitely. Someone might be freaking out. Uh, you're starting Tyreek Hill. Uh, do you think about Sammy Watkins as an option this week in a possible shootout? Uh, he was on the field I mean, in ni- 90% guy, of snaps last week. A flex week. guy. He's going up against Artie Burns, who's who's a pretty pretty decent corner. How about um, – Can he burn the Burns? He might not <laughs> burn, burn the Burns. Artie Burns uh, didn't – he probably just got fined because he got in a fight with Jarvis Landry. You see that? Did he? Oh, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, he pulled his helmet off. He threw it on the <laughs> threw nice. it on the ground. Well, but pay attention to that. B- bless yeah, him. I think he, I, I I don't know off the, off the top of my head. I can look that up. But uh, what about what do you guys think about Travis Kelsey going? Uh, what do you have? One reception. He's another for six by yards? low guy. I think yeah. If you know that Travis Kelsey People guy is kind of like, oh man, Mahomes. He he's not going to throw the ball because well, like, Alex Smith would just throw the tight end. I would try to get Kelsey on the low if I could right now. I mean, like, who who else are you going to start at tight end if if you have Kelsey? You know, 
You drafted, you spent a second, third round pick on Kelsey realistically. I mean, you're not starting anyone else here, over him. Here's a, here's a question. Would you, you know, let's just say someone's all in on the, the, the Mahomes Tyreek thing and thinks it's going to be the, the next greatest thing and someone's a little worried about Zeke. Would you, would you, if you, if you trade Tyreek for Zeke, if you could make that offer? I would trade Tyreek for Zeke, I think. And I mean, that's something where maybe, you know, see if, uh, if I had Tyreek, I would do it for Zeke, especially if I had other receivers there that were good. You know, see if maybe someone's a little wor- – I mean, that's just a, it's a trade option where I just kind of like – I just like, think – well, I think the thing with Zeke was is, uh, their center wasn't didn't play that last game, right? Yeah. Travis, Travis, uh, Travis Frederick or something like that. Yeah, and he still went for over four yards of carry too. Zach Martin is still a little banged up. I think his knee's kind of messed up. So I think – I mean, that's just a deep I mean, trade Zeke, I'm thinking about if you're Zeke's a deep receiver. Monster. He's going to finish top five. And, I mean, they, he, he, that was a bad game for Zeke. Yeah, realistically, and he still had it, what, 15 and he or still 16, had a good, you know, what I'm saying? yeah. So uh, you're not starting any defense in this one. Yeah, there's no, no um, defense this one. Actually, back to Sammy Watkins. I think if you're in a double flex league, because there are still a lot of those now, uh, and you want an upside pick, I think he's a good upside pick in this. Because this, this could be a shootout. This I think be, I think the Steelers are just gonna pour on some points here. I think they're gonna they're gonna score 40 points easy. The Chiefs' defense is not good. I mean, they just gave it up to Philip Rivers and the Chargers last week, so. I think Big Ben and that the Steelers have no problem scoring points, so they're going to be playing catch up most of this game. Yeah, and it's you know the, the Steelers saw what Tyreek did last week, so they might even try and scheme uh, to stop him. I mean, you have to scheme to stop him at this point. He's a he's like a human glitch. Him and Kamara, they just uh, they the rules don't apply to them. All right, so what's on the next matchup? Uh, yeah, that's. Do you got anything else to add, Mike? Are you good? What? Do you have anything else to add? Or are you good? Uh, I don't think so. I don't have anything else. I don't um, think so. <laughs> I do not. Uh, I don't. Uh, how you say? How you say? No. Oh wow! What what a great uh, matchup! Pittsburgh versus Kansas City. So so much information. Wow! Oh my goodness. Do you want to pause it again? What? Do you want to pause it? No, again? no, no. Wait, that, what do you mean pause it? Uh, we just started. We're we're we're, 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 we're here. We're, we're live. We're live. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm not live. Is this a simulation? Okay. Uh, Let's move on to the New York Jets versus J-E-T-S. your favorite J-E-T-S. team, guys. Uh, Where are they again? Righty, let's Miami. Go. The Miami? The Miami Sluts. The Miami I mean, Dolphins. Dolphins. Miami, uh, Miami. So Ryan Tannehill, yeah, 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 I think you're keeping him on the bench this week. Yeah, I don't think you're starting him. From like a fan's perspective, I thought he played really good. Yeah. His first game in like... I don't know, six hundred days or something like something crazy like that. He played really good. Yeah, he was a good. It's a good sign for the receivers in Miami to see Tanhill be yeah. out there moving, throwing some good balls. He, uh, I think he was like fourth in air yards too. He actually was throwing the ball pretty deep. Yeah, um, our offense looked pretty good as a whole. I thought. Yeah, and from where they were last year, like so we're fans from where they were last year. Their offense looks better this year. Yeah. Um, Kenyon Drake, uh, you're starting Kenyon Drake this week. Um, you know there was. If you look at the stat, he's one of those running backs where if you look at the stat sheet on week one, you're going to kind of panic a little bit. But if you look at the snap count and who was on the field, you know, Drake was on the field for 40, 46, of, um, 46 snaps compared to Frank Gore's 18. So he was on the field 74% to 29. So he's still in that top 10 running back percentage of snaps. It was just a weird game. There was lightning, like four pauses. You could have watched it with the Sunday night game almost. Yeah, um, because there were so many delays. This was kind of a weird game because of the delays. Yeah, the opportunities were kind of weird for him too. I mean, he had 17 touches, Drake, uh, but he kind of that kind of limits him because we had a kickoff return or a punt return for a touchdown, so that he we didn't need him then. And then I think the next series we came out there, we threw a 60 yard bomb or whatever to Kenny Still, so it's like he didn't touch the ball again in that drive either. So um, the opportunity wasn't really there for him too much because we you know we had those two quick score plays like that. So. Yeah, he's um, he's a guy where you sorry to cut you off. Um, if if a lot there's a lot of people mixed emotion on Drake, um, and I think he's going to be a solid RB two. Uh, if someone was reluctant to draft him and they don't they saw last week and they're like, oh, he sucks. You know, make an offer for if you need a running back, throw a decent receiver out there and see if they bite. Um, you know, I think week one a little, might have been a little bit of a disappointment, but like we just said, it was a weird game, and you know, two we had a kickoff return, a bomb, and he wasn't even on the field for. A decent amount of time so make an offer for drake you know see, see what see what you can get maybe uh maybe like one of your like flex wide receivers see if someone will bite on that yeah so we have no tight end honestly we have gasecki but he's kind of just like a red zone guy 
Uh, so there's a real no tight end threat there for fantasy wise. Kenny Stills just exploded. What was it, like four catches, 100 summon yards, 120 yards, two touchdowns, something like that. Yeah, he just he he, he went off. The the guy's just got a, a nose for the end zone. I don't know what it is. I mean, this, that's just what Stills does. He doesn't. He's not a big PPR guy, but he's he's a touchdown guy. I don't know what it is. He just he's always finding a way to get in the end zone. Yeah, there's players where it's just like. You know, not every player is alike. They're all different. You know, whether they run the speed or routes and height. You know, and Kenny Stills, like I said, he just gets in the end zone. He's going to get you. Uh, I think he's a top twenty like touchdown totals over the last three years of wide receivers. He just scores. He makes big plays. If Devontae Parker's out again, um, you know, Amendola and Wilson are kind of more underneath guys. You know, he's the big play. And if Tannehill's going to keep firing shots, you know, Stills is going to be the one who's going to be on the other end of those shots. Yeah, I saw an interesting stat that uh, since 2013, only Deshaun Jackson, Deshaun Jackson, Deshaun Jackson, Deshaun Connery, Deshaun Sheeshan Jackson, is the only player who averages more yards <laughs> per catch than Kenny Stills since 2013. So he's a big yards per catch guy right there. Too. You say Sean Connery? <laughs> Sean, Con- Sean Connery. Connery. <laughs> we we kind of noticed watching Sean the game too. Is like we we were throwing to the receivers a ton. I mean, Jakeem Grant came out of nowhere. He had. <laughs> Four or five catches. Amendola was here. You know, Wilson was getting used all over the place. I'm kind of excited to see how Ke- uh, Kenny uh, Devontae Parker is used when he comes back. I mean, we've we, we, you know we've seen him flash some big play potential. He just can't stay in the field. You know, he's got a broken finger already. So I mean, how we'll much does it bother back. you? It bothers me so much when NFL players are like they broke their finger. I understand he's a wide receiver. But My it's finger like, hurts. But, I, yeah, yeah, but that's kind of an important. <laughs> Dude. It was uh, from uh, fucking Happy Gilmore. Yeah, well, now your back's going to hurt because you just pulled Lance. <laughs> <you do. laughs> My fingers hurt. What's that? <laughs> Sorry, that made me laugh so hard. <laughs> oh, but, uh, yeah, uh, Dev- I'm kind of excited for Devontae Parker. Just maybe some of, some of the stash. If he's on your waiver wire, stash him. <laughs> so dumb. I can't stop laughing at that. <laughs> it's like the timing was impeccable there. Okay. Uh, yes. Anything else you guys notice on uh, defense? Impeccable? Definitely not starting defense. Gore, would you roster Gore? <sighs> <sighs> I guess, <laughs> I, I guess that answers that question. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So in a deep up. league, I guess he's a cuff guy. Uh, but he uh, looked good though. He, yeah, he did. He was running hard. I mean, he, he looked good. He was just running hard. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So on to the Jet side. Uh, Sam Donald. Is that way? It's Donald, right? Hey, Donald. I, hey, I get all these <laughs> rookie quarterbacks mixed up sometimes. Uh, he got a W in his first start. Uh, threw a pick six in his first pass and, you know, gathered himself and came back and they won yeah. the game. Um, I don't think you're starting Donald at this point. Uh, if you're in a deep league, you know, is he a quarterback you pick up? I mean, he might be a streamer quarterback later yeah. down the road, but I don't think he's someone you roster yeah, yet. No. Um, the running game... Uh, Crowell and Powell, I think they both had actually playable weeks last week. Uh, against Miami, uh, how do you feel about the backs this week? Uh, I think I was watching uh, Crowell. I, I, watched, I watched that whole game, actually. Cro- Crowell looked really good. And, you know, we talked about Crowell, um, you know, last year. He was a guy who I didn't like on the Browns. But this year, I, I, you know, I was more into him on the Jets offense. Um, and he came out and he played really good. I'm kind of trying to sell high on him right now. So if you have him, maybe try to sell high on him. But I think he's going to be a consistent guy where, you know, he's getting, you know, I think he's going to get like 200, you know, carries throughout the year possibly. Wait, so you like him, but you're trying to sell high on him? Just sell high on him because his, his value could the be value is, high. I mean, 100 yards, two touchdowns. People could be like, oh, you know what I'm saying? So if you, if I could package, is, if I could package him and like, a, I don't know, like a receiver, like if I can package him in the cob and try to get like a uh, cream hunt like i mean I'll, i would do that in a heartbeat or even uh, what you do i think it's gonna be a good actually trade scenario on the opposite side of the ball maybe you can get isaiah crowell for drake straight up and i think season long that's better value oh yeah 100 percent. or if you could do a crowell plus like you said just throwing a receiver you're not really going to use that maybe had a good game and do that that's probably a perfect scenario for a trade right there um yeah i would offer if i crow i'd offer him for drake and see if i can get that yeah 100 percent uh the, th- the thing with powell is i mean he's He's just a guy. He's a guy. I mean, he's been there for so long. I think he's a good NFL player. Like he's he a, a good <laughs> veteran player. But if he was the guy, they wouldn't. You know, like you said, they, they, I've heard someone say like they wouldn't have went out and got Matt Forte when he was you know at the tail end of his career. You know, they wouldn't have went out and signed 
Isaiah Crowell if, if Powell was the guy. So I, I think this is going to remain a 50-50 split. And then, I mean, you still got Elijah McGuire in the back burner once he comes back from IR. Um, I think Crowell's a good flex, R, like low-end RB2 guy. Yeah, I think Powell, the, I don't know. I have him in one league, and I, and I think I'm going to drop him, actually, uh, uh, to pick up someone else. There, there, It's a timeshare there. Um, you know, you, you figure Crowell be, looks to be the goal line back, so... Uh, you know, if when the Jets are in the red zone, he's going to be the guy. Uh, Powell, Powell, I always screw up his name. Are you saying Powell? He seems to be getting more of the targets in the passing game. So I think it's one of those where, you know, maybe a more competitive game. You know, Crowell has a better game. Maybe a, you know, a, a negative game script. Powell has, you know, maybe more of the advantage between the two. <laughs> I can't even say his dude's Here, name. You're trying to say call him BP. Oh, uh, that's cool. Yeah, I see that. All right, so on the receiver side, a uh, little worried about Robbie Anderson, kind of the low targets coming from a new quarterback. Uh, he yeah. had a good year last year because Josh McCown, uh, you know, was he's a different type of quarterback. He's basically, I'm going to drop back and just chuck this thing in the air, and you're going to catch it, and you're like, okay, cool, I'll do that. Yeah. And they did that a lot last year. But target share, I think he only saw one target, right? 100% catch rate, though. He's good. <laughs> he is, he's, he's good. good. <laughs> uh, Quincy Anunwa, waiver wire uh, pickup guy. If you if you didn't pick him up or if he's still there by chance, I think I actually picked him up without uh, paying for him in one league. Uh, seems to be Sam Darnold's guy. You know, sometimes a quarterback and a receiver they have a connection. And if you're in a PPR league, you know he had uh, how many targets did he have? Let's see. A fuck ton. Ten. ten <laughs> he had ten targets, and uh, he turned that into I believe it was six for sixty something in a touchdown. Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said, I was watching that whole game, and he was just – Anuwa was his guy. That was his security blanket. They didn't really have a tight end. Um, you know, Anuwa was kind of the guy who was lined up in the slot a lot, I felt like, and, you know, short passes. And, and one thing I noticed, too, with Anuwa is I think people forgot about him last year since he was out the whole year with the, the neck injury. But he was supposed to be the number one last year until he, he had that neck injury that uh, made him miss the entire season. But one thing I noticed is when he caught the ball, he, he was – He's aggressive, you know. He's like a running back out there running the ball. You know, he's he was trucking people, he's making people miss tackles. Uh, he looked good. That's probably why I hurt his neck. Just, probably yeah, <laughs> trying to trying to book people. Uh, I actually like him as a good play this week. Uh, Miami, you know, Howard's going to be on the outside with Robbie Anderson. He's our strongest corner. He's 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 he shut down uh, receivers before. Um, so I think Noon was someone you can uh, plug and play this week as a wide receiver too, even flex. Um, yeah, like a new was as a flex. Yeah, was, Robbie. I mean, I guess you could flex him too. You kind of, uh, we'll see. But I, for me, I was telling someone if I had Robbie Anderson, I would try to trade him. Yeah, see if, if I can could get package him with someone. You know what I'm saying? See Pack- if someone believes he's still that top 20 receiver because I don't think it's going to be the case this year. <laughs> yeah, I'm not um, sure what what Darnold there if he's going to be a top, that same. Would you start Aguilar or uh, Quincy Anunua? Aguilar. But I, w- I like a new one, though. So I think I'd go, Aguilar, I think I'd go as, long, as long as Nick Foles is still being, is still quarterback there, I like Aguilar. I think I'd go in Nuno. I just think, the the for me personally, I think it's close. But uh, I think he's going to have a higher yards per catch with relatively uh, the same targets. That's yeah. that's why I lean on the new one. Um, would you do – let's look at some flex plays real quick. Uh, let's see. Marvin Jones or Quincy Anunua? Ooh, that was a tough one. I've never <laughs> been a big Marvin Jones guy, so <laughs> I think I, one, especially with Kyle Galladay just came out and kind of, you know. Standard, I would go still go Jones. Uh, P- standard, P- I'd go Jones. Yeah. Uh, PPR, I think I'd still go Jones. Yeah. Yeah, he just missed three big. Tu- he missed two touchdowns. They were in his fingertips and came out. Uh, a third one. He's gonna get red zone targets. Um, uh, that's that's a, that's a tough one though. Yeah, I mean, if you put in that claim for a new one, you got him. I mean, you're most likely you went out to get him because you're thinking here's a guy I could play. So you're most likely gonna throw him in your flex spot at least. You know, here's a tough decision this week where I think some people might be able to. Uh, we maybe can, you know, give him some uh, help on the tilt with this. Amari Cooper, or Quincy Anunwa this week. Oh, see that was tough. Cooper's like we got the upside on Cooper, but he's definitely got a bad matchup. If you want to save her floor, Anunwa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I think Anunwa can get you at least. Five for fifty. Five for fifty. Yeah, if, if could Cooper put up another stinker, I think one hundred percent. I think he could have another dud game. Yeah, I think this could be a, another bad game for Cooper. But I also see the, you know, I mean that's a bold strategy, Cotton. But we'll see. I mean, you never know. Sometimes you got to make some bold, bold calls. I mean, I'm benching Cooper for Cooper Cup in one of my leagues, but that's uh, really, yeah. It's, they're just uh, 
Cooper, uh, where are they playing? Arizona. I think Peterson's going to shadow. No, they're not playing Arizona. They're playing they Denver. Are. Arizona. Oh, no, Cooper Cup. Oh, oh I think pardon. I think uh, well, Peterson's going to shadow one of Woods or uh, uh, what's his name, Brandon Cooks. So you know they do run three wide receiver sets. Basically, they don't even target their tight end. Um, and Cooper Cup seems to be the red zone target once again. Uh, so if Peterson's taking away one of those two, it's going to lead Cup to you know a, potentially a big game this week. Yeah. All right. Uh, uh, where were we at? Uh, let's move on to the next matchup. So yeah, next. Anyway, if you got him, throw him in there. Robbie Anderson, he could flex guy too, but I it was week know. one. So if you got him, you, you paid for price for him. You want to start him? Go ahead. Yeah. It could be complete. It could be the opposite week two. It might be three targets for a noon for all we know, and nine for Robbie Anderson. Yeah, yeah. hundred so. percent. Good switch up. Let's go over to Philadelphia's playing the surprise show up team. Fucking Ryan Fitzpatrick, fifty points on the goddamn board 50 in points. Tampa QB Bay. One. Do you Buccaneers. believe in magic? Did anybody mm-hmm. play mm-hmm. Ryan Fitzpatrick? I don't think so. Bucks fans. <laughs> Fucking Bucks maybe, fans. dude. Even then, even then they were like, "There's some other dude that has a podcast," and they're like, ah, "Ryan Fitzpatrick this week." I'm a Bucks fan, but definitely don't play him this week. <laughs> I guarantee you, someone said that. In any type of universe. All right. So Foles, <laughs> uh, he looks like he's still banged up. I don't know. I, I don't think Foles is 100% healthy, but I think he's healthier than Wentz. So yeah. that's why they have him out there. I think that's kind of why he was dink and dunk in the past a lot. And they don't really care if his he's he's not the future, so it doesn't matter yeah. what happens, basically. So uh, no Alshon Jeffrey again. Uh, this is kind of why I like Nelson Aguilar. I mean, he had... Eight catches, he had ten targets. I think we, me and Mike, we were watching that game, and he, I think he had like three catches that were take, take called back, back from, from, from penalties. Yeah. So, I mean, he could have had eleven catches. Granted, they're five, four yards a catch, but yeah, if, I if, mean, if, he, he's PPR. It's PPR. Sure. You're getting a PPR point every time, I believe. Yeah. Standard, it's a lot. Uh, standard, of yeah. Story. Standard, it's a different story. But if you're in a PPR league, he, I mean, I think it's he gets the same workload. I, I don't think that workload's going to change at all. Yeah, I think week. he's a safe bet for, as as any receiver this week for ten targets, especially because he lines up in the slot. So I mean, uh, the Bucks they have Brent Grimes. He's a pretty good vet, uh, veteran corner, but he lines up on the outside. He's banged up, and then they might have lost. Uh, I believe he's on, I believe third. he's on IR. I think he's I think he's sh- shoulder injury last week, and he's on the IR. So that defense is not very good. I think that. Nelson Aguilar just kind of eats in the middle like he did last week. I think he, I think it's that same uh, amount of uh, production. Yeah, he, he has week. a super green matchup. If you go to Pro Football Focus, he's a fifty six percent advantage. So yeah, uh, you know he ha- he has made big plays in the past when he had Wentz. So maybe uh, he's able to you know get a ten fifteen yard play and turning it into thirty. So you know he does have some. Um, you know some play upside. I think he's a safe PPR wide receiver, even flex. If you just don't want to get burned in your flex, and you're like, hey, like, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to have my flex be a dud. Nelson Aguilar is perfect for that flex play right there. Yeah. So for me, a bold. Uh, you're saying you're starting Co- uh, Cooper Cup over Amari Cooper this week. My yeah. bold uh, pick would be I'm starting Nelson Aguilar <laughs> over Amari Cooper this week, just because he does have that huge. Uh, <sighs> he has Amari a huge uh, standard and PPR. PPR. Right, standard, I would still I would go with Cooper and standard, but yeah. PPR. If you wanted to do it, hey, I'm not against it. Um, so with the tight end position, you're, you're firing in Zach Ertz. Uh, we don't need to talk about him. Um, I mean, I, there are some people who are panicking about Zach Ertz a little bit though. So week one is the thing where it's like if, you, if make some offers because you're gonna have people who are out there panicking about players if they don't have the greatest week. Like, oh yeah. crap! Like this guy sucks. This guy does that. The the most tilt, especially if they lost. Yeah, the most tilt is in the first few weeks. So the first few weeks is great to try and like. Especially Mar- if Zach Ertz has another like, especially guys like this when they have like two weeks, three weeks even. Yeah, definitely target that. Like Amari Cooper might be an ultimate buy low if he has another bad week. I mean, yeah, he's gonna he has another like brutal matchup this week. So. Um, you know, if he goes out and has a low game, I think he's going to be probably someone. If I don't have him, I'm trying to trade for him and you know for nickels on the dime for something cheap. Um, the running back situation, uh, you're starting to jai. Um, you know, he's an RB two play this week. Um, Sproles, are you considering him in any formats or? I mean, Sproles could be a flex. If you're especially a double flex, I think he could be a flex guy. Um, he was out there a ton. He was out there way more than I expected he was going to be out there. Uh, Ajay, he kind of just took advantage of his opportunities to cash in those two touchdowns. But I mean, if he doesn't get a touchdown, Ajay has a terrible game. He, d- he didn't have a single target the whole game. He's he's not the pass catching guy out there. The touchdown saved him. He only got he's only on the field for forty percent of the snaps. Uh, I love Ajay. 
They have a great line, great offense. If they would just give that guy the ball, I mean, that's the thing. Give that guy the ball. Like, stop trying to get cute with these Sproles and Clement. Give a guy the ball. I mean, he, when he's out there, he's running good. I mean, what, Mike, we watched the game. He, he yeah. looked good. When yeah. Peterson came out and he says he needs to get, uh, he's going to get Jai more involved this week. Um, so the, you know he could maybe shoot up to fifty six. I don't the way they run that system. He's never going to be a seventy percent back, but he doesn't need to to be a, a high end RB two. Um, he has an elite line, so you know even though he might not get you many catches this year, he might be he could potentially lead the league in rushing touchdowns or be among the top three, um, just because that line just opens holes for him. He he can make last year he almost had like two or three like fifty yard touchdowns. You know, he got tackled inside the five. You know, last week he had two touchdowns, one from 11, the other one from, uh, I forget how many yards. But, you know, you're starting him if you have him. You're not benching a giant at this point. Yeah, I mean, he, run, he, he runs hard. That guy's, it's hard to take him down. You you were you you were getting frustrated with J.J. for real. Yeah, I think everyone was frustrated minute. with J.J. in yeah. that first half. He had, like, one point. You know, what like I, you know what I'm frustrated and with? Sproles was out there every play. Philly, you know what pisses me off about Philly? is Doug Peterson wearing those fucking visors, dude. <laughs> what the fuck year is it, guy? Why It's not 1997. Dude, we get it. You have a full fucking head of hair, but take that shit off, idiot. It's like when Bill Belichick cuts off that goddamn sweater. Get a new one. You got all these fucking ones in a box somewhere in the back. Put that shit on. <laughs> these coaches piss me off. Did we touch the other side Sorry. of this matchup? Who was it? Uh, no, I don't think so. Uh, Phillies D, who are they playing? Last Tampa one. Bay. That's what we're talking about right now. Yeah, no, I know. I forgot who we were. We were on Philly song. I forgot <laughs> who they were playing. I uh, mean, Tampa it's Bay. P- Pittspatrick. Uh, I wouldn't hold it against them. Uh, the, the Eagles D, like, they've had a couple extra Their days defense to, is solid, to prepare man. for this, you know, because yeah. they played that first Thursday night game. So they've had a couple extra days to prepare for this. I'm sure they've watched the film and saw how the Saints just got roasted on bomb after bomb after bomb. I highly doubt that that happens again. I don't think they're going to get beat deep on bombs mm-hmm. uh, in this game. I, w- I, w- I mean, I wouldn't mind. Uh, I think Philly's a top ten up the defense. Yeah, I think Philly's they're a top defense. ten option. Don't be week. afraid. Yeah, don't. If you have Philly's yeah. defense, don't be like, oh man, they, 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 I don't want to start them. I, I would start Philly's defense. So confident. Tampa Bay. Look, la- a week ago you would be fucking hyped to play Philly's defense <laughs> against Tampa Bay if it wasn't for this fucking last game. Yeah. I mean, so and it's and it, yeah, Saints defense got better last year, but it's not like. The Saints have been known for a fucking great defense. Yeah, this is yes. kind of like an anomaly that last year it started happening. As fast as it can be, t- Fitz Magic. T- he could also be Pickpatrick. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, yeah, he's not like yeah, he's all over the place, dude. So all right, so let's move on to Tampa Bay side of the ball. Mike Evans, you're playing him. Playing him. Um, Chris Godwin, someone I actually benched Josh Gordon for and put him in the lineup last week late. Um, Deshaun Jackson might be out of the lineup this week. Um, and if he's out, I kind of like Chris Godwin as a flex play this week. Um, when he's had six or more targets in a game, he's had at least 85 yards in every single one of those games. Um, he was on the field for, I believe it was 70% of the snaps last week. I'm taking a look right now. Uh, 70% of the snaps, yeah. Deshaun Jackson was on there for 30%. Granted, he got hurt. Um, so if Deshaun Jackson's out there, I think Chris Godwin's someone you can, you know, uh, an upside play with uh, as a flex. Oh uh, yeah, hundred percent. I think yeah, Deshaun, if, especially if Deshaun Jackson's not there, uh, I think you throw Godwin there in the flex, one hundred percent. So for the running back position there, Peyton Barber, uh, the hype in the preseason was all about Ronald Jones, Ronald Jones, Ronald yeah, Jones, and everyone's about Ronald Jones. Ronald Jones was not even think non-existent. I don't even know if he played. Did he? Uh, no, I think Ronald I Jones know. the first got more. I was snaps watching yeah, Ronald Jones first. I was yeah. watching us tie to the fucking Browns. Yeah. So Peyton. <laughs> Peyton Barber played 47 of the 62 snaps, and he had 19 carries. The next closest running back had two carries. So if that's that's pretty much the definition of a workhorse back right there. I think maybe in the season, as it progressed, maybe they get Ronald Jones more involved. But, I mean, if you have Peyton Barber, he's, you, a, uh, he's an RB2, low-end RB2, yeah, he's flex a, guy. Do you, flex have, guy do you guys have Ronald I mean, Jones? We're talking about volume all the time. He's like 19 carries. What and, and, he's, and he's a good catcher. I think he... He had some yeah. targets. He had like a seventy percent catch rate uh, last year, I believe. What are you doing with Ronald Jones if you have him on your bench? Dropping him, uh, probably point. dropping him. Yeah, yeah, see, because I because I I put it in for a waiver, I didn't end up getting it, but so I still have him on my roster. But I wasn't f- mad about dropping him. He wasn't. Yeah, I think he's someone where does he have late season potential with an injury? He could be one of those guys where Peyton Barber goes down, and they put Ronald Jones in, and he's a every week RB two. But as of right now, he's going to be. He was inactive last week. He might be inactive again for all we know. I think he's someone you can drop and 
I, I personally believe the first three to four weeks are the most important with the waiver wire because everything's still getting yeah. settled and you can find some guys that are going to hit. So, you know, let's just say Marlon Mack's going to be a hit or let's just say F- Lindsay's a hit and you don't take these guys because you hold uh, Ronald Jones because you're hoping in December uh, that he comes up to be right. something and you miss that player, you're going to be kicking yourself in the, the right, katoot. definitely. In the, in the what? <laughs> I don't even know if that's... The, <laughs> what did you say? In the katoot? In the katoot. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. Right in the katoot. Um, yo, yo, dude, this girl came over the other day, and she showed me her katoot. Oh, so fucking nice, hey. bro. Dude, Lunchtime. first time I met her, too. Crazy. Oh, dude, wild boy. Yeah. Dude. 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 <laughs> dude. <laughs> All right, next matchup. Uh-oh. What about the tight ends here? You, uh, oh, uh, I don't even know how they did it, honestly. I just I, know that the receivers were catching bombs every drive <laughs> that Fitzpatrick was out there. Uh, I mean, O.J. Howard was 2 for 54, and what I, what I like to see out of O.J. Howard is... Um, he played on 65% of the snaps, so this wasn't much of a timeshare. Last year was kind of a timeshare tight end uh, situation. Um, he's he's leading in the snaps. So while Fitzpatrick is someone who doesn't throw to his tight ends a lot, Jameis Winston is. So if Jameis Winston is going to come back and be the starter, O.J. Howard, I think he has something stupid where he had like 20 catchers or 30 catches last year, but like was like over five or 600 yards. Like last, last week, two for 54. So he's a big play tight end. He was drafted, you know, as a first round athletic freak. Um, he's someone, you know, when James comes back, he might end up being a, you know, a weekly high upside type of tight end. Yeah. How did Bray do? Bray. Cameron Bray. Bray. He had nothing. <laughs> nothing. He had a whole lot of nada. Uh, let's see if he had any targets real quick. Uh, two targets. Two targets, so. Two, two, two targets. All right, Mike, next matchup. Oh, are you uh, starting the defenses at Tampa Bay? Nah. No, no not we Tampa We talked Bay. about Philly defense. But yeah, yeah, Philly defense, I'd play them. Yeah, well. For sure. Yeah. Uh, mm. I don't know about Tampa Bay. I'm trying to think because Foles' is arm. Uh, nah. Yeah, nah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm nah, not going to. Nah. I, I think what the Chances are, if, you have, if you're trying to play Tampa Bay's defense, there's probably another better yeah, option. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Is for sure. 100%. So, nah. Next. Uh, let's go. Oh, <laughs> let's go over to uh, the New Orleans Saints. Oh, 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 oh. Are you drowning? I'm sorry. I'm just choking because they fucking choked it on the good fucks last year. All right, take a look. Those are my Dude, first of all, <laughs> fuck the Saints, okay? Because yeah. minus five fifty, they cost me a fucking big parlay. Bro, someone told me that there's they in their They're survival league. They had 32 people in their survival league, and 30 of them picked <laughs> the Saints. Oh my <laughs> after god! After week one, there's fucking two more teams. I would have taken the Ravens, <laughs> oh bro. God. Yeah, it's like that was the main ones, the Ravens, and people took the fucking Saints. But I guess yeah. in this survival league, everybody took the I Saints. I like, you want to split the pot, dude? That's so <laughs> fucking bro, fun. Yeah. Week two, bro. bro start that's a new so survivor cr- week, bro. That's so crazy. <laughs> But anyways, um, let's let's move on to yeah Saints and uh, against Cleveland in New Orleans. Ooh, Cleveland. So this Cleveland. is the, kind of the same thing as last week. It look you're like on paper it looks good, but fuck, you don't. Yeah, know. I mean Drew Brees dialing him up, Kamara, he, Super Kamario. Just, yeah, Jesus. I, I okay. think as long as Ingram's out, Drew Brees is going to be a top three option. Yeah, I kind of even said that preseason. I don't know if I said it on here or me and Tyler discussed it. I was like, as long as Ingram's out. Um, I might I, even put it I in had my a dream post. Mark Ingram retired, by the way. <laughs> I, had a dream I ma- hope not, because I haven't been like three <laughs> <really. laughs> Me too. And I, dude, I had a dream he retired, and I, and I had dropped Mike Gillisley, and I was just like, fuck, I need to get him back. And then I woke up, and I was like, oh, no, wait, what the fuck? Like, that's not real. I think if you are an Ingram owner, though, it's a good sign that the Saints couldn't run the ball as well without him. I don't yeah. think Kamara's, you know, uh, they were. it was a different game script, but I think they don't want Kamara to be out there for 80% of the snaps if they can help it. Um, you know, he is a freak and you want to keep him healthy all year long. Um, so I think when Ingram comes back, he's going to have the same role he did last year. So uh, if you are have Ingram and you can hold out and win some with him, I think when you get him back, it's a this week was a good sign for uh, going forward with him. Yeah, I think Gillisley, uh was just he's just a guy. He's, he's just there. Guy. He's just a depth guy. Like, hey, can you get a goal line carry? He fumbled the ball, and I think he's just he's just there until Mark Ingram comes. And I wouldn't be surprised if once Mark Ingram comes back, if they cut him. No, I, yeah, I think you're right. They probably will. So Mike, I was hoping that he, I, I I picked him up at a couple. F- are you starting? <coughs> are you starting Michael Thomas? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he only had 18 catches. Jesus, <laughs> was it 18? I thought it was 16. 
Either way, Either dude, it's way. fucking retarded, dude. Retarded. That's so He's on crazy. Pay- I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and keep talking. I'm going to figure out his yearly pace. Just, yeah. Just so, yeah, Michael Thomas, you're playing him. Uh, dude, tight end. Yeah, there's Ben Watson there. I'm not so really big on Ben Watson. There, there's got to be someone better. The Browns do struggle have. with tight ends, but, I mean, there's got to be someone better. There's like got to be said. someone better on the waiver wire. You drafted someone better. Uh, I mean, he was 4 for 44 last week, but this was a bad game script. Yeah. Um, what about um, Ginn? Again, again, again. <laughs> Sorry, like, we know, were Dolphins fans and we drafted Ted. You know, Ginn. we we totally fucked it up last week because we were like, uh, don't start again. And I think he wanted to get a touchdown and a couple receptions. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not game. a lot. But we but also didn't know that the the Bucks were going to be up forty eight. Bro, we didn't points. know it was going to be a fucking. But Ginn's one of those guys where like he's shootout. kind of hard to, you know, he'll have those games like that. He'll have yeah. some boom games like that, but then he'll also have some games where he'll get you like two for twenty three. You know, yeah. so. I just think game script, kind of seeing how it plays out. Like I, I mean, if he had a dud game this week, I wouldn't be surprised. But I mean, I think Ginn's a guy you should, you could for sure have on your bench, you know. And in the bye weeks, when the bye weeks come, if you want to throw him in on a on, on a flex, you can. So yeah, I, mean, I think if you have a deep bench, oh my god, sorry. Right. At home against the Browns, it's not like that courageous or bold of a move to put Ted Ginn in. I think. Yeah, I think I think Ginn's gonna be a, a good play when you have Michael Thomas going up against. An elite type of corner, I feel like you got in a, in a shootout potential. I think that's more of a time where you want to start him. Um, if you're in a deep league, uh, I think Gin's someone who is okay to roster. Where if you have two, three buys and you're just like, I'm kind of screwed this week. I have no Gurley. I have no someone else, and you just want a guy who can maybe catch one or two bombs. I think that's kind of what you roster Gin for. Uh, someone who can make, you know, have a Kenny Stills game, four catches for 100 and something yards and two tugs because he has right. that upside. Um, yeah, I think we've touched on pretty much everyone here. Yeah. Oh, by the way, Michael Thomas is on pace for 256 catches this year. Oh my God. Would that be a record? I don't know. <laughs> I think Jerry Rice would come back and try and break it. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> um, Let's so go we're on Cleveland to, side. Hey, Cleveland dude. side. Tyrod. I think Tyrod's a good... You could stream him again this yeah. week. I feel comfortable streaming him. I almost feel like anywhere he's at... I, I, you could put him just the fact that he's a rushing quarterback like that. Yeah, yeah. you can say the rushing gives him that you know the safe floor. Seventy-seven yards last week on the ground. That's yeah. if you're in a four point, that's almost two touchdowns on the ground. Oh, yeah. and he ran one in, so yeah, that was basically f- fourteen points in the ground last week. Yeah, I mean he's got weapons. I mean you got Jarvis, you got Josh Gordon. So I mean he's yeah. and Joku. These are for sure the best weapons he's ever had. Yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's in the dome, right? Or is it in Cleveland? No, it's, no, in the it's the Superdome. It's in the Dome, so he's not going to have to worry about the rain and weather like he had last week. I think if you're looking at the numbers, that kind of skewed Roethlisberger's and his numbers a little bit. I mean, um, maybe he's yeah. a guy you could pick up if you have a Rodgers and you're kind of worried about that matchup like we were talking about earlier. Maybe yeah. Tyrod's a guy you could pick up and stream for this week, you know, better matchup. Especially if, you know, I think the Saints are going to come out. They're going to be pissed. I mean, they oh, kind of yeah. got to come out and put up some points in this game. Yeah, you can't, blow, be, you can't could, blow a game against the Bucks and then the Browns. The and then lose to the Browns. So I think the Saints are going to come out and score some points. This could be a game where Tyrod's kind of chasing. Would, would you rather start – I think this is a good one. Because uh, Tom Brady actually has a really tough matchup against Jacksonville this week. Would you rather start Tyrod or Tom Brady against Jacksonville this week? Oh, that's a, well, first of all, you thought Tom Brady is a fucking <laughs> goat. I don't fucking – Jackson who? I, I don't give a fuck. This, bro. <laughs> Tom fucking Brady. <laughs> Do you even have Tom Brady in any leagues? I got Tom Brady in every fucking league. Tom Brady's <laughs> in my fucking flex. I got Tom Brady playing defense this fucking week against the Jaguars. <laughs> Two QB league, Tom Brady in both spots. I can't do it as good. <laughs> um, was Uncle Sal, Cousin Sal? God, I don't fucking know. That one's tough. I mean, if... Yeah. It's Brady. You don't want to bet against Brady, but I mean, Tyron might have a safer floor. I mean, if... Ah. It's in Jacksonville, isn't it? Yeah, it's in Jacksonville. And I think the Jags, they they let that game get away from them last last year in the yeah. AFC Championship. And I think they're going to come out and kind of want to make a statement. And I think they're going to slap them, punch them in the mouth, and show them, hey, like, you know. What, yeah, this you, is what my yeah, winner you're, like. you know, your, your era is coming to an end. We're here. Uh, the Jags, they don't really have any receivers on the outside, you know, the Jags. We, I guess we'll, we'll talk about that when we get into there. So, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Tyrod outscored him. That's kind of a bold. Yeah. Strategy cotton, but I wouldn't be surprised if Tyrod Ellis. I think if you're not Brady. a Brady fan, you're not you're you're not tied to Brady. Um, you know, I w- if you wanted to do that, I wouldn't be opposed to it. Yeah. If you wanted to have a safe four in a game that could be a shootout, I mean, Mitz, Mitz, Magic Patrick, I can't even think of his name anymore. Fitzpatrick just uh, 
you know, threw for four touchdowns. Uh, I'm not I'm not writing the Saints defense off yet, but I mean, Tyra does have some weapons. He is going to run. He is in a dome. There's no weather. Um, could he go out there and rush for 50 yards, throw two touchdowns for 250? I mean, you know, he might with those rushing totals be safer. If you're in a four point league, I consider it more over six. Yeah, hundred hundred percent. Um, the running back situation, Carlos Hyde, you're starting Hyde. Uh, you know, he, he was per, uh, high percentage of the, uh, <laughs> no, obviously actually it was high percentage of the carries, but the snaps were about him, even with him and, with Duke, him Johnson. and Duke Johnson. I think, yeah, I think you're starting Duke Johnson in the flex. You can start, uh, Carlos Hyde in the flex. Chubb's just kind of a, he's an afterthought right now. I think he's the future more than the present. Yeah. Um, Landry, bless him. 16 targets. I mean. That's crazy. Yeah, I think this might be closer to ten and ten this week with those yeah, two. Yeah, I think so too. Because I think but you're still Gordon starting, only had three. Yeah, you're still you're still starting Landry for sure. I mean, he's uh, you know he's he's got a he's got a rapport with uh, uh, Tyrod, and this is you, you don't even touch it. You're, you're starting Landry. Uh, yeah. Gordon, would you start? Where, let, me, let me ask. Would you guys start Carlos Hyde over Royce Freeman? Who do the uh, the Broncos play? The Broncos play uh, Oakland in Denver. Mm, I think I go Royce. Yeah, that's uh, I. I'd, I'd I'm asking probably have for him. a fan of the <laughs> podcast. You asking for a friend? No, uh, yeah, no, no. It's a listener sent in a. Uh, the the reason I probably go Royce is I think there's a better chance of Denver being up against Oakland versus Cleveland, Cleveland trailing New Orleans and it being more of a Duke Johnson game. Right. That's my reasoning for why I choose Royce over. Yeah, people uh, game script, bro. Yeah, because yeah. they're both not highly catchbacks. At least it seems like so far. Um, you know, so I I think the game script might be more in his favor versus New Orleans could hypothetically get up to, you know, make this a shootout, and you might see more Duke Johnson than you do Hyde in this game. Yeah, I, I agree with that. Okay, let's move on to uh, LA what do Rams. We know? LA Rams in Los Angeles against Arizona. You won't believe this spread. They're minus 12 and a half. It's the Rams against who? The Cardinals. Oh, you start. Wait, I'm sorry. Ooh. I won't back. Are you starting Saints D this week off of last week? Because a lot of people paid up for the Saints D because they played yeah, uh, No, I wouldn't. Just because I'm. The Browns' are, offense is going to be pretty good. I mean, Josh Gordon. They said he was going to be on a snap count. He played 78% of the snaps. He was out there for 38 of the 45 pass attempts. I mean, he only had three targets, but I think that goes up, like you said. I think he was I mean, him, Landry, and Joku. You got Duke Johnson on the backfield. The good offensive line. Tyrod can run the ball. Uh, yeah, I think, yeah, I, will, I wouldn't start the Saints, Steve. Yeah, I think I, I don't think I'd drop him if I had him. and If I couldn't, couldn't drop him because I think they're going to be a good D. But I think I'd try and find a better option this week if I could. Yeah. All right, sorry. Back to the next no, match. Right. Uh, L.A. Rams minus twelve and a half against mm-hmm. Arizona in Los Angeles. <laughs> so Rammy, I was looking at the the sheet for this week's games, and twelve and a half is a lot of points. But if you watch the game, it, Bradford looked terrible. He looked like he, I don't know, it, that offense looks. Did he tuck his sleeves? Terrible. In? He didn't even have a sleeve. He, yeah, he came out looking. That t- offense <laughs> tried to be tough, terrible. and he was scared. And now they're going to go against the Rams defense. I, I can't imagine them scoring any points. So twelve really? and a half, that's a lot of points, but I, I wouldn't I'm thinking about taking it on like a parlay. Really? Just because they got a good offense. Week. Good offense. Uh so you're benching Bradford. You're benching Bradford. You're starting David Johnson. You don't you gotta start him. David Johnson. You're starting Fitz. Are you worried about David temp- Johnson's role changing with the new coach? Bruce Arians isn't there, right? Yeah. I think it's the week where he's gonna get peppered with targets from Bradford. I think he's gonna be scared for his life and it's gonna be kind of what she saw with Carr last week. Uh you know, just David Johnson go, David Johnson go. Um What do you think of yeah. They might not have a lot of honestly, they might not have a lot of offensive snaps in this game, so temper your David Johnson, you know, expectations. But it's a divisional game, so you never know. Those are always the funkiest games of all. Um Larry Fitz, uh he does have some home road splits, that is for sure. Um, over the last couple of years, he's he's been a little better at home than he is on the road. Um, I'd look at Fitz more of like a a safe wide receiver too than I would with you know Fitz seven for you know one twenty type of game. I think he's more of a wide receiver two in this right. uh, this matchup. Maybe even a low end wide receiver two flex to be honest. Yeah, I'm nervous for Fitz in this game. I mean, he's all they have on offense besides David Johnson. And if if I'm Wade Phillips, I'm literally just scheming on how to take away Those Larry two. Fitz, and I'll 
let Christian Kirk and was it Chad Williams on the outside try to beat me. But yeah. I'm, I'm taking away Larry Fitz and I'm stacking the box on David Johnson. For right. sure. What do you think about uh, Ricky Seals? The Seal? I th- he, he did all right. He might be all right. Cause I think he might be a sneaky can beat start. The Rams, I think it is the tight end spot. And I mean, he's. Bradford's definitely not going to throw on those corners. So, I mean, if sh- quick short passes, close to the line of scrimmage. Yeah. He I mean, played I, 92, I per, 92% of snaps last week, so it's yeah. a high. Um, Sam Bradford, I feel like he, he's, he can favor the tight end. I think if you're no? in a PPR league, I think I think Loki thinks Seals is going to be a sneaky, safe play this week, especially seeing what yeah. Oakland did with the tight end to the Rams. Um, you know they're going to scheme to take away Larry. You know they're going to scheme to take away Johnson. And I'd be like, well, out of necessity, you know, Ricky Seals might fall into 5 to 55, and I don't know if he'll score, but, um, you know, he might be a sneaky, safe tight end play this week. Um, where are we at? Uh, Cardinals. Science. Cardinals D, negative. Negative. Rams D, positive. <laughs> Would you start, okay, so flex, flex question. Would you start Larry Fitz or James White? James Larry, White. Larry Fitz. I think I'd go Fitz, too. That's a tough one, but I think I'd lean Fitz. If you don't play Fitz, I'm going to have a fit. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, you know what? If if, if Burkhead is out, James White, I changed my answer. Yeah. So I can pay attention to that. I just think there's not many options there, so I think the Rams could literally just game plan and say, hey, we're going to take away Fitz. I mean, they could double him the whole game, and, I mean... It's yeah. going to be tough. Yeah, it's going to be tough. I, yeah. this, I think this could be a blow. 12 and a half is a lot of points, but I think they're just going to fucking destroy the The Cardinals. only reason I disagree is just because it's a divisional game. I don't know. People I mean, do. yeah. We'll I, I don't know. It sounds great. What do stupid, you know? Are you a doctor? Yo, I'm not a fucking doctor guy, but listen here. I play one on TV, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Would you All start? Right, cool. oh, let me try and find a couple because some people might have some tough uh, fits. I'm trying to find uh Manuel Sanders or Fitz? Sanders. Sanders as well for me, too. I'm kind of looking in the same range. Uh, Hogan uh, or Fitz? So that's two I, tough matchups. I I'd, go, I'd go Fitz on that one. I think I'd go. I think Bill Check and Scheme. I think if, if one of these two teams is going to score, it's going to be the Patriots instead of the, uh, the Cardinals. So I think I'd actually go Hogan. Yeah. But if I had both those in my lineup, I'd probably be crapping myself right now. Yeah, it'd be like, oh, that's a tough week. <laughs> I'd probably be shooting up there for like a Chris Godwin type and let's take one of them out to shoot for upside. Yeah. Um, let's do one more. Allen Robinson or Fitz? Fitz, because I think Allen Robinson is... I'm yeah, I'm pissed that I have him in one of my leagues. I think I'd go Robinson, actually. Yeah. I mean, he was the number one. He was out there. He uh, he, he looked healthy. Um, he's he, Keyword looked. Yeah, I mean, he looked at. <laughs> uh, I mean, I think Allen Robinson has a chance to blow, like not blow up, but I think if you're going to shoot upside, I think his ceiling in this week, this week matchup in particular, is higher. Yeah. Okay. Yes. Yeah. From that. Perspective, and he he I might even be safer. Just Seattle's defense is pretty bad, so, um, you know, I think Fitzgerald's floor is relatively low this week. It wouldn't surprise me if Fitzgerald went three for twenty-one this week. No, one hundred percent. I wouldn't be surprised either. All right. So All right. Go, moving over to the Rams side, golf. I think golf could be a good. Good streamer play this week. Yeah, I think Goff's a good streamer play this week as well. Um, Gurley, he's just I he's don't know. Pick, picked up. He's right tough. Where, where, right where he <laughs> left off, huh? Dude, when I was up uh, visiting my mom, she lives right next to Gurley Street. I was like, is it a sign? <laughs> yes, it is. It's a street sign, but also it's a dirt. Would you start Jared Goff over Matthew Stafford coming off of last week? Ooh, that one's tough. Because I think Stafford bounces back. I believe uh, he bounces back as well. Uh, the um, Niners' defense isn't anything to be terrified of. I think I'd go Stafford. I think it's more of a that yeah. g- that game has a script for more of a shootout with that two bad defenses. That game is a shootout game. Yeah, I think I'd go Stafford too. And because the Rams could get up so much, yeah, to where they they don't they're not throwing the ball that much. Would you start? Uh, let's see, Goff or Tyrod? Mm-hmm. I, think I think I'm going Tyrod. Yeah, I think I'm just going because they might need to. They might need to throw to score. I'm, I'm telling you, man. Yeah. Ra- I feel like the Rams are just gonna. I think I go Tyrod as well. They're just gonna He's bend Rapless Burger the fuck out of the fucking Cardinals. What's uh, Goff or Brady? Fucking Tom Brady, bro. I think I, think I go. I think I go Brady <laughs> in that case. <laughs> fucking Tom Brady, bro. I mean, you dropped that him in a first round, first overall, bro. I think Goff is just gonna be a really 
if you have him and you don't have, if he was your number one, you play him and you're going to get your 250 for two. Yeah. I don't think it's going to be anything sexy or crazy. But the Rams are one of those teams where they don't hold back. You know, they're the Belichick type where they'll score 60 points if you let them. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so for all we know, Goff could throw for 303 in the first half. And then it could be Gurley take over in the second half. Yeah. Um, receiver wise, uh, are you are you um, are you fading any of the two on the outside? Because we touched on uh, earlier that they are gonna have Patrick Peterson on the outside. Um, probably not because I was reading something that's saying that Patrick Peterson most likely won't shadow one of those guys. He's just gonna stay on the side. So I think if they move those outside receivers back and forth, back and forth, or moving the slot or whatnot. Um, they'll all get their opportunity to, to play against Patrick Peterson, but um, sometimes they won't. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just an interesting stat I found out with that. The Rams, those three receivers, they were on the field for 61 of the 63 snaps. So, I mean, they're they're out there every fucking play pretty much. Dirty, yeah. So those guys are, I mean, I think Robert Woods had the worst game, but, I mean, even then he had like two or three red zone targets that he barely missed. Yeah, he just missed him on a, like a 40 or 50-yard bomb. Yeah, he, he was there. His game was different. He Cooks, had an open post. He would have yeah, been different. Yeah, I think different. those guys, I don't think he's going to favor anyone really. Um, I think Cooper Cup is his boy, like, you know, we talked about. In the you know in the preseason, and he's kind of like more of like the red zone guy too for him because he has like that rapport and the, yeah. the chemistry. But I think all three of these guys every week could be players that you could throw in like your flex at least. You know. Yeah, you got to figure they're all pretty much a five for fifty every week. I mean, Goff's gonna. This is a, this is a this is a top scoring offense again. This is a top three scoring offense. Uh, you know, if you figure Goff throws for at least two hundred every game. Uh, you got to figure, you know, they could each see 50 each relatively safe each week with one of them shooting up to 100 one week or, yeah, you know, it's going to be, you know, if you have them, you pretty much, you know, you can flex all those each week, you know, uh, maybe a, a picture gets painted a little clearer where Cooks is maybe the true one and Woods is more of a two or, you know, it's still so early where, like we just said last week, Cooks could have went for, you know, how do you not get any PIs and made a big catch for 100 yards. Woods could have went for 100 yards. Um, I think yardage white Garbage wise, Cup's not going to be the highest out of those three. Maybe season long because of pace, but like if you're looking game wise, the other two probably have a little bit more big game upside. But Coop has the red zone upside of those. Yeah, so. I think Cup is the more consistent yeah, safe floor he's every a week, week in, out of week those out. Three. You know, um, they they have no tight end threat. No, really. yeah. So I mean, it's those three tight ends. And I mean, those three receivers and Gurley. Gurley. So yeah. All right. So let's move on to the Nick. You're starting the Rams D. Yeah, Rams D, r- number one D. Number one D over uh, is is the Rams defense. Okay, uh, let's go into uh, San Francisco in San Francisco against the Detroit Lions against the uh, Matt Stafford fucked up Lions. <laughs> All right, so uh, let's start with let's start with Detroit. I think Stafford has a bounce back game. <coughs> Um, I think I, if, I agree. I think if someone panicked and dropped him, pick him up, and you can probably you can play him this week. Uh, this game has a uh, makings of a shootout. I mean, every quarterback has bad weeks. Uh, I mean, we've seen multiple quarterbacks have a week one disaster and turn it. Ben around. does it every other week. <laughs> <laughs> it's sweet. Um, the running situation. Uh, Carry on Johnson somewhere. I'm interested to see if Legarrette Blunt's out this week or further. His, he hurt his knee and came out, but there's been no updates yet. It's, it's really weird, actually. Um, we're recording this on a Wednesday night, and I've heard no updates, but he left the game. Um, you know, he. I don't know if he's someone I'd be comfortable starting yet, but if Legarrette Blunt's out and you see Carry on Johnson with a true role, he could end up being a flex play going forward. Um, the three receivers, I almost feel like this is the Rams scenario, but not as good as an offense where you can almost play all three of these guys in a given week. Yeah, 100% I agree. Again, there's no real tight end threat here, so these three receivers are on the field a ton. Um, I think at any given week, all three of them could, could have a good game. Uh, for the running back-wise, I think Blunt, I think I saw something that he practiced in like limited fashion this week, he? but he's kind of like day-to-day. Um Carry on Johnson. He didn't really get any run because they were down the whole game. So uh, there was theoretic was on the field the yeah, whole there was, time. Yeah, there was anything Blunt, from it. Blunt, Blunt's actually listed on the injury report as, with a shoulder issue too. Yeah, he's so there's he that too. So, did he die? Yeah, I don't know. Carry on Johnson's one of those guys where I'm, I'm just holding on to him and yeah, me too. Uh, maybe like week five, six, seven. You know, then that's when he kind of emerges and takes over as like the main guy. Because I, I mean, Blunt's just. He's just a guy. Yeah, I kind of went on, yeah. uh, posted on our thing, and n- not bold statement, but you know he could be relatively like a uh, a potential Kamara light this year, where he's kind of clouded in the beginning of the year, 
Uh, he's talented. He's showed flashes. I mean, the Lions haven't had a 100-yard rusher in forever. And you, in the preseason, he was making some big runs. He even had some nice runs in this game when he played for a few a uh, few snaps. Um, I think three, like 56 three of his, yards or something. Yeah, I think three of his four carries, like he looked good on three or four of them. The other one, he got blasted for a loss of six because the line couldn't hold up in that play. Um, so he's someone I'm, I'm holding, and I think there's potential for a week four or five on him being a, a every week RB2, which is hard to find. Yeah, don't panic, drop him. I mean, like Kamara, for instance, last, I mean, he didn't really burst out until like week four or five. So, um, uh, I was guilty. I actually drafted Kamara in one league, and then like week three, I needed to get someone, and I dropped Kamara for I can't remember who I dropped him for, like an idiot. But Probably yeah, just Mike hold Gilles on to Carryon Johnson and uh, <laughs> <laughs> hold on to him, and uh, don't don't panic, drop him. Uh, he's like a patient guy. Get away with him. Yeah, yeah. the receivers. Uh, you're starting Golden Tate in this. He's the safe. He's the Cooper Cup in this. Uh, this scenario, he's the safest. Maybe not red zone outside of Cooper Cup, but he's the one who's probably gonna have the safest floor. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. Marvin Jones and Kenny Galladay, um, you know, like Tyler touched on is like there's no tight end. So these guys are basically extensions of the tight end passing game because uh, they're both huge guys. I mean, Marvin Jones saw two deep balls and another red zone target. Um, you know, I'm not really panicking on Marvin Jones yet. Galladay have a big game. I might even try and see if I could buy Jones because Galladay had such a – he did the same thing last year. Came out and had a big week one, um, you know, and then got faded a little bit. But he was on the field a lot of snaps. They are all over 80%. I think this is another situation where all three of these guys could be owned. Yeah, I agree. And 100%. started this week too. Yeah, no, I agree 100. percent Lions D, not playing him. Yeah, not playing him. Ziggy Ansah, their main pass rusher, he's uh, he's most likely gonna miss. I read so that that even hurts them even more. Um, yeah. let's see. So Doors, over to San Francisco. Uh, so everybody Jimmy G. lost Marquise Goodwin. Jimmy G. I think oh, this is the, the the week that you can dial up Jimmy Jesus if you want to throw him in there. Marquise Goodwin should be back, right? I think he's got a deep thigh bruise. But yeah, he I mean, most likely he should week, be back. So. I think he's just resting, you know, for a game day. But he should be out there. I, I think this is going to be a shootout. I think this is an offensive shootout, quarterback duel, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, neither team really has running game, uh, in a sense. So I think it's going to be a quarterback duel, back and forth, back and forth. I, I wouldn't be surprised to see if both these quarterbacks throw for three hundred plus yards. Yeah, I agree. Two, three touchdowns each. Um, Garcon, you starting him? <laughs> Garcon, I think you're starting with the shit, especially if Goodwin's out. You're especially starting Garcon. Goodwin's out. Uh, Garcon, Kittle, love Kittle. Um, I think he's a good start this week as well. I think he's a good start. Uh, so something for me with Kittle was, and we never really got a chance to talk about it. Is as soon as the McKinnon injury happened, I think everyone was like, "Oh, Breida, Breida, you know, Breida's going to be the guy because Morris isn't a pass catching guy." But I was telling you that I actually believe that this actually boosted Kittle's value because yeah. he's the closest receiver to the line more quick passes kind of like a quick pass to the running back would be um and then another interesting stat i saw for the running backs was is that uh alfred morris 31 snaps 12 carries brita 30 snaps 30 snaps 15 was it oh no, 11 carries right uh, i don't have that. 11 carries yeah so they're pretty much even uh, Breida had only two targets. He only had one catch. So everyone's talking about Breida is better than Morris because he's going to be the pass catching guy, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, they were down the whole game from the jump and they split this workload right down the middle and he only had one catch. So, I mean, I don't know. You were telling me, you know, in the preseason, like, oh, I don't know about McKinnon because, you know, you kind of noticed you picked up a trend on Jimmy G that he, he didn't really throw the ball to the running backs that often. So. I mean, yeah. could this be just a kind of a thing that he just maybe he just doesn't target the running backs? Yeah, it was uh, when Jimmy G started, I believe Carlos Hyde, I, I might be off by a few numbers, but I'm, I'm relatively close. Uh, he had 59 catches last year. Uh, I think like 48 of them or 50 came without Jimmy G in the lineup. And once Jimmy G came in, he averaged like uh, maybe one catch a game or less. It was it was pretty significant drop off. And like Tyler just touched on, uh, you know, Jimmy G only targeted what burrito twice, you said? Yeah, Breed only twice. There was actually only four total targets to the running backs. Two two to the fullback, Kyle Juszczyk, two to Breida, and zero to Morris. But another interesting stat was uh, Morris ran 15 routes. Breida ran 14. So Morris ran more routes than Breida did. Mm. So And he was a goal line back there, too. And he's the goal line back. He, I think he fumbled yeah. in the goal line fumbled back, like right? Twice. So, so let's see if he gets punished or not with I that. I think this is just going to be a running back by committee the whole year, though. It's yeah. going to be a 50-50 split. And... Um, 
But if there's no passing work going to the backs, I think Morris is the guy I want to own over Burita because he yeah. seems to be the goal line back. 100%. Uh, he knows the system too, you know. Like Kyle Shanahan, obviously, he signs him off the street because he knows Morris is the guy. Hey, man, you, yeah, I trust you. I've coached you before. You know the plays. You know the schemes. I trust you to go out there and, and get it done. So, are you starting either of these guys this week? Um, I mean, seeing yeah, how I mean, seeing I, how the Jets backs just tore the Jets back just tore apart. Uh, yeah, the Lions I mean, if you, so. you're a flex guy, you, you got to throw one of these guys in your flex. I, I wouldn't be surprised at that, especially because I think this is going to be a high scoring game. There could be some red zone opportunities to run the ball and and whatnot. Yeah, I agree. Next, on. next, okay, next, go to your boy Tom Brady. Oh fucking Tom Brady! Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> fucking Tom fucking what do you Brady. You guys want to start Jacksonville? Uh, let's go. Let's start New England. Let's start easy, huh? Start easy. Let's go, with Tom Brady. You're starting Tom Brady. Oh wait, are you? Tom fucking are you? Tom Brady, bro. I I, I mean would, honestly, I it's him. this is one of those things where it's you can literally win or lose your week in this decision. You know, you you tie yourself to Tom Brady, or um, you know you. You, you you try and play an option where you know this is a bad matchup. Like I actually personally would start Alex Smith over this Tom Brady this week. Uh, Alex Smith against Indianapolis, uh, I like that matchup a lot. If I had both those quarterbacks, I would shoot Alex Smith. Um, hey guys, I got Deshaun Watson by the way. The waiver claim just went oh, in. Oh nice, that's a steal. So I just got Deshaun Watson. <laughs> I dropped I dropped Mike Gillis. He probably got drafted him. in the third round. <laughs> nice, that's crazy, bro. Dude, that's so nuts. Oh, oh, yeah, I just actually, I just had to announce that because I'm just fucking hyped right now. So actually, don't be that guy. Don't drop Deshaun Watson. To touch on what they were kind of talking about earlier, I was on my phone looking up some uh, statistics. Is don't even don't uh, don't even check like the waiver wire. The day after, but keep checking it as a week goes on. Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I said in the very beginning when we just started yeah. today. Check it Friday. Check just it. Check Saturday. that activity me- and messages on ESPN app. Check that transaction trends on Yahoo Fantasy. Man, you, f- dude, I fucking see people doing some silly ass shit every yeah. week, dude. And they'll try and be sneaky about it sometimes too. They'll be like, oh, they'll, yeah, they'll, they'll drop, drop them on, on like Saturday. Saturday. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and didn't you get Tyler Eifert one year because someone tried to sneak him by, and that's when he ended up being like a good second half oh, fantasy yeah, or something yeah. like that? Yeah. I was uh, like, "What is he? Is this a glitch?" I, I was like, I was surprised. I was like, Why "Someone dropped, someone dropped Zeke right last year." Remember, I, I was, I was out of the playoffs, so I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna tell you." Remember, oh told yeah, you? it's because he was suspended for that meantime. But yeah, you told me to pick. I him was up like, "Bro, pick him up. You're gonna make the playoffs." Just stash so. him. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Sorry. Uh, but uh, Tom Brady. I mean, most likely, if you have Tom Brady, you're you're gonna play Tom Brady. Yeah. It's, but if it's, you have like a Rivers and Brady combination, com- combination, uh, combination, which some people might have, you can yeah. get Rivers late. Uh, I, I would start Rivers. I would yeah, start Rivers. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Deshaun had a bad week last week. We'll say you have both. Uh, those are too high to. Um, who could be another combo? Big Ben and Tom Brady. I'd go Big Ben in this oh, scenario. Big ben, yeah, mm. for sure. Uh, what about Cousins or Brady? If you have both of those, Cousins. I go Wait, Cousins. Cousins against what? The Green Bay, right? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I like Cousins. Yeah, I mean, it's a tough game for Brady. In, uh, no, it's in. I mean, you, you got to think realistically that <laughs> Ramsey and Bouye, they can lock up Dorsett and Hogan. Like, I, I wouldn't start Dorsett or Hogan this week. Gronk is, is Gronk. He's going to do what he does. Uh, for me personally, I think a big game is James White, who's going to have a big game. Burkhead's kind of banged up. Yeah. And even though Burkhead got like an 18, 19 carries, he only had one catch. And that's where James White comes in, and that's where he eats. He gets those short catches. And I think that. You know, those outside receivers are going to get locked up by Bouye and Ramsey. And, you know, Gronk's going to kind of occupy the middle of the field that they're going to have to pay attention to him. I think this is where James White eats, you know, quick short passes, you know, to that, that kind of like uh, negates the pass rush that Saxonville has. Quick short passes to James White. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if he had like eight catches this week. Yeah. There, I mean, if you want to look at Tom Brady last year against Jacksonville, he did actually have, you know, Brandon Cooks to help out with that receiver core. And not having him this year, I think, and he had a healthy Deion Lewis there. Um, you know, I think his weapons are a little they're not they're not as good as they were last year. Edelman's not there either. Um I mean Hogan Yeah, or Amendola. Hogan's yeah. not the receiver who's gonna go out there and shake either Boye or Ramses is the best on a Ramses. consistent on a consistent basis. So uh it's in Jacksonville too. This is actually a matchup where it's lining up for Brady to not have a you know a top ten performance. He might be in the realm of two hundred. You know, maybe one or two. He might even throw a pick in this game, possibly even yeah. two. Um, it's just, it's just, it's not. The stars aren't aligning for this to be a plus matchup for Brady. So no, not at all. James James White. Uh, not, yeah, James White. Nine targets last week. So I think he can see nine targets or even more, maybe possibly this week. Yeah. I, I think Hogan. I'm not starting Hogan. 
I, I mean, I was big on Hogan this year, but this week, no. Dorsett, I think he had a big, good game last week, but this week, no. Yeah, it's a. Uh, it, I mean, it's rough. H- Hogan it's a, would be a good buy low candidate next week, I think. So, because like this week, he probably won't have a good game. People are going to be like, oh, Hogan, I thought he was going to be good, blah, blah, blah. They might even drop him. They might even drop him, bro. And that's when you just swoop him up. But, I mean, he was on the field for 39 of the 41 pass attempts. So, I mean, he's on the field, when, you know, out there. He's, he's out there. So He's out there. He's out there. All right. Uh, Let's go to Patriots D. Oh. I'm not starting not him. Not starting Patriots D. Gronk. Gronk is he's spiking. Spike. He's, he might go. If, if they're going to win, it's because Gronk has, like, 19 catches for Michael Thomas game, 100 and 215. <laughs> I wouldn't doubt it. It's fucking Gronk. <laughs> um, so Jacksonville side. Um, you got to watch the news with Fournette. Oh, sorry, Mike. What are you saying? Did we, you guys touch on the running backs on, on in New England? Yeah, James well, What about Watt. Burkhead? You starting Burkhead? If he's starting, I think they are, the way they're going to have to win is going to be through the backs, through the passing game with, up the middle. So if he's a so flex guy. Yeah, if he's in the – if he's – if he's available, what if this he week? ends up he's accidentally your RB two. <laughs> yes, I mean he could have some RB two. No, I think, like I said, I, I think that oh. they're gonna have to throw the ball to the running backs. I think throw the running backs back. are gonna be heavily involved in this one, just because it's the spinal. receivers are not, you know. Yeah. And both, he's, both flex he's, guys. He's the RB2 goal line back. Too. I actually, I think are the RB two upside on both those guys yeah. for sure. Yeah. He's the goal line back too as of now because when they get down there, they don't play. They run the ball. So, um, Jacksonville, Fournette, you, you gotta hope he's healthy this week. Um, even if he is, how comfortable are you with him as starting him? Uh, I'm not comfortable. I have him in two leagues. Luckily for me, I did grab Yeldon in both those leagues just in case he was to miss a game. I could throw Yeldon in there. Uh, I'm not you comfortable grab, you at You grabbed him in both I, leagues? Yeah, I have Yeldon in both leagues uh, that I have for net. I'm just – it's a soft tissue injury. It's a hamstring. I mean, he can feel good, and then he can go out there and try to hit full speed, hit the burners, and instantly he tweaks it again. Now they take him out. <laughs> I'm 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 stuck with two points because he was only in there for you know two drives maybe I, I don't know I'm super I honestly I would rather them just sit him out this week let him get one full week to re- two weeks I honestly because he gets this week and next week to rest give him two weeks to rest Yeldon's more than capable to go out there and, and get the job done they're at home I mean they got a good defense I I, I that's that would be my if I was a coach that would be my I mean, I, just, I don't know if you could bench him if he plays, though. It's just so tough to bench him. Yeah. yeah especially where you drafted him. Yeah. Um, but if, if he's out, I think Yeldon's a great RB2 play this week if you have Yeldon. Yeah, 100%. Um, receiver, uh, let's move over to the receiver core. Um, uh, I think the two options there are going to be Keelan Cole and D.D. Westbrook. Um, Keelan Cole actually had a relatively tough matchup last week against Janoris Jenkins, um, but still did decent. Um I think he has another tough matchup against uh, Stefan Gilmore this week too. Yeah, um, I think you, if you have, I think if you have better option, I would go there. Um, I mean, they're both kind of maybe flex plays for me this week, but um, you know, if one of them has a big game, it wouldn't surprise me. Um, but I think you're kind of rolling the dice right now, kind of just to uh, as to who's going to be. I think there's probably better some some better streaming options out there. Yeah, uh, starting ASJ at tight end. With the thin, how thin it is right now? I think he's like in that Ben Watson's Ricky Seals Jones range. He just so, keeps getting robbed on those touchdowns, yeah. dude. Like, how many have t- like ten more career touchdowns, dude. I know, man. <laughs> yeah, he he was one of my sleepers last week, and he had a touchdown. He had like a twenty yard touchdown where he kind of just ran up like a a post or a corner, and he kind of just jumped over the guy because he's so big. And they called it back on some dumbass penalty because the lineman was blocking and. He hit the guy's helmet, and the hel- hit the guy's helmet. The defender's helmet came off, so they called like illegal hands to the face and some s- stupid shit. So he had another touchdown to get, or else he yeah. would have had a big game. You know, he had a, I think it was like four catches, fifty yards, and a touchdown. So, I mean, he's a big guy, six six. I know, he's a red I, I, zone I, guy. I, he's a he's a tight end that I I actually do like watch, watching play. I don't know. I. I, I don't know if this matchup's the greatest. I don't know if I would play him in here. I mean, you might have to. Like I said, if you lost a, an Olsen or a Delaney, and the tight end some teams, some You might have thin. a league where two, they're rostering two tight ends on a lot of teams. Yeah, so. yeah I mean, if he's there and, you, and you, you're looking for a tight end, I mean, he's he's a guy who I, I wouldn't mind streaming. He's got he's got the touchdown upside. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He's a big, big 6'6 six, six guy. He's, he's a red zone threat, you know? He's in that, he's like I said, kind of, he's in that range where you're, you're kind of – you got a feel for what the game script. He's going to have a couple of targets, and he has a chance to score. So, um, are you starting Jacksonville's defense in this? Yes, yeah, I'm comfortable. It's their home. 
Yeah, I think I'm okay. I mean, if you draft the Jacksonville, you probably spend a high draft pick on them as the first defense taken off the board. I mean, I don't think you're going to start anyone else. Yeah, I mean, this um, uh, this game might not be a shootout. It could be more of a defensive game, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, I can definitely see that. Blake Bortles? Uh, I'm good. I'm, with, I, with what you just <laughs> said about it possibly being a defensive game, I, I would not start Blake Bortles. I think there's better streaming options there's, out yeah, there. Yeah, there's better streaming options for yeah. sure. All right, moving on. Let's go over to Mr. Denver Broncos against the Oakland Raiders. The Oakland Raiders. <laughs> <laughs> do your best in there. I can't do an A at all. <laughs> <laughs> I can't an A either, dude. <laughs> I'll embarrass the shit on myself if I try an A right now. Okay, it's in Denver. Mile High Stadium, right? How high? Coors Light sta- No, it's at the Coors Light Field. Okay, yeah, I know. Is it the Rockies? Yeah. yeah. Anyways, <laughs> sorry. I really know how to derail this podcast. <laughs> Anyways, so for the Broncos, uh, Keenum, I talked about him a little bit earlier. He's a guy who I might possibly pick up and stream for this week because I got Rodgers, and I'm kind of I'm kind of nervous with that matchup. Um, he's at home against the Raiders. The Raiders' defense does not look like it's going to be a defense to fear at all. You know, they they were the, they had Khalil Mack, and they got rid of him. So it's like now who do they have? They really muffed that up. Didn't yeah, they, they? they kind of fucked that up. So, um, Keenum would be a guy, maybe possible stream. Uh, would you feel comfortable with Ke- Keenum or Brady? That's kind of a bold. That's a bold one right there. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, damn, it's a tough one. Uh, the match. Keenum has a good matchup. He's got a plus matchup. It's. I probably would play. I think it. That, that's a bold one right there. If you started Keenum, I think I still go. I think I still go Brady because he did make a lot of mistakes last week. Still, yeah. And this is a game where I, I think they might try and run the ball a little more uh, than than they limit his mistakes kind of and have yeah. smart I like safe Keenum. passes. I, I would almost play play Keenum. Yeah. I don't know. So Keenum uh, starting Demarius, starting Sanders. Right, you're starting those two guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm hype Sanders. Balled out, especially because you know we were we were hyping him up pretty yeah. good in the preseason. Oh, so. no. I think they were, he's the mm-hmm. most hype we were giving out of anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's touch on the running backs then, because uh, you know it was almost uh, it, uh ooh, I lost my page. Um, it's like who is Phil yeah, Lindsay? Phil Lindsay kind of where did he yeah. come from? You know, I, I saw. Him I kind of. I, I'm. I'm. Been, I picked him up in like two leagues. I, I saw him in the preseason, uh, like on a few snaps, but I thought it was just a. It was just a guy, and it was no one. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and then going. all of a sudden, you know, Devontae Burker is supposed to be the, the number two back here, and it looks like Philip Lindsay took that role and uh, ran with it, literally, on the field. And caught with, with it. it. And caught with it. Um, I, kinda, I feel like it feels it feels like they they might be copying the New Orleans running scheme. Yeah, as I say, this is almost was, like a... was last year. Yeah, it's a, it's this is this... I don't even say New Orleans. This is, this is like a thunder and lightning situation yeah. right here. Uh, Royce Freeman's the Thunder. Philip Lindsay's the Lightning. He's kind of that quick, like shifty. Um, I think last week is kind of the ceiling of his touches. I don't think it's going to be so close on every week. I think Royce Freeman's going to be uh, more of the the carry totals guy, and Lindsay's going to get a little more of the passing game work. Um, I think it might be more of like a you know seventeen ten type of like uh, rushing like workload t- and every, uh, blah, week to week. Yeah, I mean Lindsay obviously. It's good in space. You can't stack the box on him. So when those receivers run out, if you're gonna dump a little pass to Lindsey, it's he's in space. And yeah, we saw him. He's shifty, and he that yeah. guy's got some burners on him. His acceleration was crazy. Yeah, he's definitely not gonna be the goal line back either. So Royce Freeman's gonna be the goal yeah, line. Yeah, like back. in a standard league, I wouldn't touch this Philip Lindsey guy. I, I don't know. I didn't at least in a standard league. I think, I think that he's that he good to have on your bench. Yeah, I think it's a good to wait and see. You know, we still don't know what his role. This could be a. Uh, a timeshare and a team that runs the ball a lot. I mean, they had C.J. Anderson rush for a thousand yards low key last year and a ton of rushes, and Devontae Booger still got some work last year. Right. Devontae Booger, that's what I think I just called him. It's kind Booger, of, kind of what he is. He's just there. Yeah. He, Devontae Booger, he he's gonna. I think by the end of the year, he doesn't even get any run at yeah. all. I yeah. think it's a split carry there. Both these guys uh, kind of scares me with Freeman because. I you think know, we're hyping get, him so much, and then Lindsey comes in, and he's getting all these touches. Uh, yeah, I mean, it is one week, though, so we have to wait and see. Uh, yeah, we got to wait and you see. Know, maybe I it was one of those, like, guys are, you could probably, I mean, you probably went and got Lindsey off off the waiver wire, and you yeah. throw him in the flex, 
Yeah. Yeah. Why not throw him in your flex? See, see what happens. Yeah. I mean, if you had Jordan Howard last week, last year, you were freaking out when Tyree came in the scene the first few weeks. Oh yeah, that's true. You know, so it's it's you know sometimes they some teams know they have this lightning and no one knows about it. So let's go out there and just Zeus, Zeus shock him bolt and. Uh, hit him with the lightning. Shock him both. <laughs> you know, Zeus, you know, shock him both. Hit him with the lightning staff. Uh, so, you know, it's a situation where I think it's, you know, I think Royce is going to be okay. He's the starter. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, well, you're getting so creative today with the words, man. <laughs> I love it. I'm a word ninja. Hell yeah. Uh, tight end. I don't know if you're really the tight end position is tight but. End. It's but. Jake, Jake but. but. Like but. All right, Broncos so defense. That used to, I'm starting him in this match. I started, yeah, I think for sure. I think. This could be the death of Derek Carr. Uh, <laughs> I mean, his own coach even, as much as he praised him, even called him out saying, uh, basically, Derek Carr needs to open his eyes and look down the field and stop making these half-retarded decisions. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if the Raiders went out and drafted a quarterback in the first round next year, just because I, I don't think Derek Carr is a good quarterback at all. I think he's a real deal. I could see a Teddy Bridgewater trade, maybe. Something I mean, like that. something like that could possibly happen. Uh, <laughs> but. Uh, <laughs> Perk your ears. Yeah, up. Broncos Perk defense, around. light them up just because, I mean, they got Chubb, Von Miller, around, Sh- right? Shane the Ray. They got good, good say, uh, secondary. Uh, I'm worried for Derek Carr here. Yeah, I mean, we're future Raiders secondary teams, and I'm a little worried about <laughs> yeah, for sure. that quarterback situation. So the, the, definitely not starting Carr because he's a pussy. <laughs> um, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm worried about Carr. Dude, all right, if Carr <laughs> walked in, if Derek Carr walked in his room right now, would you fucking fight him? I wouldn't not? fight him, but I would tell him would to you get tell, better. Would you tell him he's a pussy? I would tell him he's a pussy and he needs to get better. He, would you tell so him? So he threw the ball like, I don't know, like 40 times or something like that on the game. And fifty more than 50% of those passes he threw were five yards or closer to the line. And only six of those 40 passes he's he like, threw he's like, hey, went look, 10 it's my- yards or more down the field. So he, he just wasn't throwing the ball. He was like dinking and dunking the ball off to the field. I don't know like, if you say dink. What's worse than a dink? I don't know. He was shovel passing. <laughs> he shovel passed 20 times He's an extreme game. shovel like, passer. <laughs> yeah. He's like, hey, 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 check out my Alex Smith impression. Yeah. He just, yeah. And well, I, I think a lot of people are then. frustrated <laughs> with Amari Cooper. Uh, and they're thinking, oh, Cooper sucks here. He sucks again this year. But I think it's uh, it's, uh, Derek, it's Carr Derek Carr that sucks. Carr, yeah. Derek yeah. Carr is not, can't get him the ball. I mean, like you were saying, Gruden was saying there's a couple times where Cooper was open down the field, and it's almost like Derek Carr didn't want to he, he didn't want to push the field. He didn't want to take so the, he was the scared shot. To take, he, take shots. So he dumped it to Jalen Richard, or he dumped it to Jared Cook. And uh, I mean the 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 Raiders wide receivers only had five catches. Yeah, seven, the, seven targets total. Seven targets total. So seven targets out of 40 pass attempts, you know, from your the receivers. You know, and you got Jordy Nelson, you got Amari Cooper there. Those guys could get seven targets alone, yeah. you know, any game, you know. The tight ends and running backs combined had 24 catches compared to five combined for the receivers. So that just shows you how much he was just dinking and dunking to the to the tight ends and running backs right there. Um, sorry, right, let's, let's touch on the position players. Uh, Marshawn Lynch, you firing him up this week? Yeah, I mean he got. He's beast mode. I mean, yeah. if you drafted him, you throw he him did in only. There. Oh, sorry, go ahead. You, you throw him in the RB two. Denver's got a pretty good run flex guy. Center, though. Yeah, I think he's more of a flex. He was only on the field thirty six percent of snaps. So I don't know if there was some kind of injury. He was questionable. Uh, he, questionable tag popped Guys, up, but he, he didn't look. He told us not to draft him in fantasy. <laughs> he, he did say that, huh? Honestly, if that snap percentage stays the same, I'm kind of hoping Marshawn Lynch scores again because then he might be my sell, one of my sell highest week three. Yeah. Um, you know, people might see, oh, beast mode, he's got two touchdowns in two games. But if I see that snap percentage low and this offense might struggle, um, he's someone I might uh, try and part ways with and pick up someone uh, solid who's had a two bad weeks. Um. Um, How do you feel about Cooper? Cooper, I mean, I'm so glad I don't have him on any of my <laughs> teams. Soon. I, know, I have him in two, two. I leagues. have him in like oh. every league, uh, borderline every league. Um, I think this is going to be another tough week for him. Uh, the cornerback matchups isn't as extreme as it was last week. Um, you know, maybe Gruden gets this ship fixed and. You know, he's like, hey, Carr, you need to see Cooper when he's open. I mean, he even said he was – he went back and watched the All-22 film and was like, Cooper was open deep on plays and Carr didn't look his way. So maybe that's something they emphasize this week. He was in the slot. He was being moved around a lot. He was given opportunities to make plays. Um, I, I can see more of a, you know, a, a five for 65 this week. Um, I mean, if you're thin and you want some upside, I mean, Cooper has shown the ability to blow up in games. 
uh, randomly. So maybe they make it an emphasis to get him going early. Um, but I mean, he's someone, like I said, I'm starting Cooper Cup over him. Um, uh, the line would probably be if I have like, if you're looking at that like 25 to 30 wide receiver range, like I'd still start him over Aguilar. Um, I know you said you start Aguilar over him. If I have some good options, I'll go that way. But I mean, if I'm thin and I'm just trying to shoot a prayer, I'm still going to start Cooper when it comes down to it. Yeah. Um, they got Martavis Bryant back, so they signed Martavis Bryant. So that should help, you would think, realistically, having Martavis, Jordy, and Cooper out there now. That's just an, another big body, another big big play receiver that they have to pay attention to. What did Jordy end up with last, last week? Uh, he had like three catches for 23 yards. So he, he didn't do good either. So Yeah. Yeah, like, um, the, the status on Cooper was in the, his last four games against the Broncos, uh, he has 13 total catches in his last four games against them. So that's not, it's not the best. That's not very good. That's not Ramses. Ramses. That's not the best. Yeah, I think. Would you start Crabtree or Cooper? Uh, I think I'd go. I, th- I think I go Cooper. I go Cooper there. They go Cooper. Josh Gordon or Cooper? Josh Gordon. Uh, Josh Gordon. You Corey Cooper. Davis or Cooper? Who's Corey Davis, probably. Okay. So well, that, that depends on the Mariota situation, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, I think I'd still go Davis even with the... Just because Davis is probably going to get 10-plus targets. Yeah. Um, I'm just worried for Cooper here because, I mean, they have Bradley Roby. They have Cliff, Cliff Harris. Chris Harris. Cliff, uh, Harris. Cliff Harris. Chris Harris. He, he'll, he'll shadow people. He'll follow people in the slot all across the field. So yeah. I read something that he's not going to shadow Cooper, but I would guess that he's going to line up against Cooper a good amount of the time, you know? Chris Hogan or Cooper. Cooper, Cooper. So I can think that's kind of where like you draw the line with Cooper is these like uh, when you get out of the like the wide receiver one like high end wide receiver twos like he's like in that wide receiver three mix this week. Yeah, I mean he's one of those guys. If he 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 you know shits the bed again, he's one of those guys I'm trying to buy low on because I guarantee you that Cooper owner is going to be pissed and they're probably just going to be giving him away for free. Yeah. I mean you can go there and you know I don't know you can give him anything. Yeah, he might a be bag a bag of re- chips and a. <laughs> Big gulp from Seven Eleven. They'll say, "Sure, take him." Uh, I think this is actually another good week to start uh, Jared Cook. Actually, yeah, I agree. I'm not big. I'm not big on Jared Cook, and I think he's I think long term not very good. But I think this is a good Denver's matchup. Against Denver, against Denver's pretty bad against tight ends. I think they give up like five. the highest amount of touchdowns. Yeah, when you ends. let a guy named Disley <laughs> score for you and get a hundred yards, I mean, he could go for back to back hundred yard games. Actually, you know what? This is a scenario where if Kelsey doesn't have the best game again and Jared Cook goes off again, I'd probably offer Cook for Kelsey and see if I can make that work. Dude, yeah, 100%. 100%. Yeah, people panic. First two weeks, the, Someone the biggest Someone Deshaun till, Watson. Are you kidding me? Of yeah. course people will do that. You start that, off yeah. 0-2 and Kelsey True. had two dud weeks. You're, that owner is, unless they have any kind of like, I don't know, I guess intelligence into like the Well, but the here's the thing is things. people are drafting Kelsey so high, so they kind of don't have that intelligence. Well, what about Deshaun? He Des- said that guy dropped him. Yeah, there's people saying, yeah. should I trade Kareem Hunt? He had a dud game. There's people saying, should I drop? You know, I've even heard, listening on the radios, like people are like, oh, should I get rid of Zach Ertz? Like, I'm telling people tilt. Yeah. Idiots. <laughs> so, Cooper, I guess, you know, most of the time you're going to start him unless you're pretty deep. Uh, just if he... <laughs> Has a bad game again. Don't be surprised because this is a tough matchup, and historically he doesn't play very good against the Broncos. And again, Derek Carr is not very good. I think that pass rush gets the Carr yeah. pretty consistent, and I think that's actually where you're saying where Jared Cook maybe short quick passes to the tight end uh, into the running backs. You know, maybe maybe this is this is almost like a, the same exact game script as it was last uh, last week. Yeah, I mean, I have Corey Davis and Cooper Cup, and and. Uh, Cooper in a league, and I'm starting those two over Cooper. But had I had like Corey Davis and like a, a Randall Cobb or Jameson Crowder, I'd, or um, you know, maybe even like Tyler, Lock, I'd, I'd be starting Cooper over those guys. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, let's go to Jordy, the next matchup. Jordy. Uh, if I'm going to start one Cooper receiver, it's going to be Cooper. Yeah, I wouldn't start, Jordy. I wouldn't start Jordy. Martavis. Uh, if you, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't, I, wouldn't him. I think he's. I think he might just be out yet. there, just running straight to take some pressure just, off. Just yeah, hundred percent. I think if anything, that can help Cooper. I'm kind of curious to see how the offense looks with Martavis out there because yeah. that those three receivers are that's a pretty good one, two, three combo right there. Yeah, for receivers, different dynamics so. of all three of them. So yeah. All right, next matchup. Uh, let's let's go Dallas in Dallas against the New York Giants. Mr. Saquon showed up. All right, we can keep it quick on the Dallas side. You're starting Zeke, and that's about it. <laughs> You're starting Zeke, yeah. Don't Dak touch Dak. Looks whatever. Alan, um, Alan I just Ernst. want to touch on uh, 
we were talking about you know who would we play for the Dallas wide receivers, and I you know I said Beasley because oh, Dak, yeah, Dak literally came out and said you know who's my go to guy Beasley, and, and he kind of backed it up by you know throwing him. He had seven catches on eight targets for seventy three yards, and I don't think any yes. other any other receiver had more than five targets. So, and Beasley was out there with Allen Hearns. The most for the most snaps yeah, out of those the receivers. The snap percentage so was kind of split out. PPR us. wise, standard is kind of tough. Uh, but PPR wise, I think Beasley is going to have a safe floor every week, just because he is Dak's go to guy. There is no tight end. Um, those other receivers are kind of still building a chemistry and a rapport with Dak. And I mean, like I said, if the quarterback comes out and says, "This is my go to guy," that's the guy I want. You know? Yeah. So Beasley is the one receiver you look at. Dak Prescott. A poor man's Edelman is kind of the way I Yeah, that's yeah. a good way to put it. Uh, Dak, you starting Dak in this matchup against the Giants? Uh, no, I think Dak historically has really bad games against the Giants from yeah. what I remember. Yeah, and I, this line's still not playing up to the, – they're missing some key pieces yet. And as long as they're missing those key pieces, I don't know if I feel comfortable. Yeah, I've actually Dak never thought there. Dak was a very good quarterback. It's more of the hit – the O line, Zeke, the O line, his Zeke. Yeah, they had the Dez, they had Jason Witten. Zeke on as Nolan. Yeah. yeah. All right, let's go over to uh, New York side. Saquon sh- actually showed up last week. You're starting Saquon. Surprised he didn't have actually more targets in the passing game. Yeah. He would think he only had two targets. I talked all this shit on Saquon, but man, he looked pretty fucking good. I've I've kind of said he's he reminds me of Reggie Bush, but he's just you can't take a break on that guy. Like they yeah. bottled him up for 17 of 18 of those runs. And then run 18, he just said, bye-bye. Yeah. <laughs> He's just so fast and explosive yeah, where... You just have to play him. You literally... Yeah, yeah no, yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I thought he... I, you know, I've kind of said he might have some dud games just because he, you know, he did. He was at one point like 15 for 32 or something like that. Like his right. rushing totals were down with zero catches. And then the defense got tired. They took a playoff and Saquon just juked somebody and took it to the house. And I think yeah. he just... He offers that every week. Right. So, you know, it's... it's you know, no. you're, you're starting him. Yeah, he, he has that Tyree kill like home run threaten him you know mm-hmm. Eli Manning I'm not touching him no I'm not I'm not touching Eli Manning uh, Ingram I start. mean this is a good I'm matchup s- for Eli Manning so I mean hold on let's look at the I don't think he's a top 15 play but I mean there are leagues where quarterbacks are on pretty deep so uh, I mean the Dallas defense isn't anything special he has these weapons I mean He's not a top 15 play, but if you're thin, I mean, and I think he could be a decent streaming option this week. Yeah, potentially. I could see that. You know, uh, you can touch him. I mean, I'm, uh, but I mean, it's, if some people have two, some, some leagues yeah, take a lot of two quarterbacks. They really do. Uh, you know, you, you might, might be a Giants fan and you drafted Eli, yeah. I think, and you, you might have these weapons that he's going to have a big year. So, you know, you could have been your quarterback. Yeah, you, you could have got Eli in the last round of your draft so. yeah or someone might have had Mariota thinking he was going to be his one this year which is yeah. big on them and he had an injury um you know i, th- I think eli provides a safe floor this safe week. floor that's that's all i'm trying to say is i think he's a safe floor if you had a streamer this week you know kind of like what andy dalton was last week yeah you know sure. he's a 252 and you know nothing crazy but um you now we can move on from the quarterback position you're starting saquon receiver position you're odell. starting you're starting odell um, I like Sterling Shepard. I think she- Shepard's a good flex play right here. Uh, he actually played really good last week yeah. against the, the the Jaguars corners, which were probably that probably could be the best right. uh, corner duo in the whole league. So, um, like you say, Dallas defense not as good as the Jaguars defense. So, I, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if Shepard had a touchdown this week. I mean, yeah, yeah. He, he lines up in the slot a lot, and it's it's a Mike Zimmer offense, and Mike Zimmer targets the slot receiver a lot in his offense. Um, you know, so I think he's I think he's one of those guys where week in and week out, if you just need a receiver to plug in for a week, um, and kind of not crap the bed, I think Sterling Shepard's someone that's awesome for that. You know, he is a good contested catch guy. He is a good separator. He's a, you know, he's a he's a high level slot receiver. Um, yeah, I love I love Sterling Shepard this week. I think he, uh, I mean, I think he had like seven catches for seventy yards last week or something. Yeah. Like that. So I mean, this week I, I mean, he, he should be able to do the same exact thing. Right. Evan Ingram. Uh, he had a pretty perform- poor performance week one, yeah. but um, how many targets did he have? Five. He had like what one catch for? I think it was one for t- was it one for twenty two or something like that. Yeah. Um, I think Everett Ingram gets a little bit back on track. You know, there's yeah, people might be panicking that oh, there's Odell Sa- uh, Saquon Shepard. He's not going to have the same role. Uh, perfect storm, but you know, even when Odell was in the lineup last year, Evan Ingram was seeing the same amount of targets. You know, yeah. week one five targets is no. 
You know, you're not getting a lot of five targets from tight ends, you know. Uh, I think week in and week out, he's going to be a safe bet for five to, you know, maybe six targets. So right. um, it's Dallas matchup. I think it's a good matchup for him. So I think you're starting Evan Ingram. Yeah, especially matchup. out thin the tight end positions. If you have Ingram, you're starting Ingram for sure. Yeah. Uh, you guys want to f- go on to the Monday night game? What, how about defenses? Uh, probably not starting either of these defenses. Yeah. 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 Uh, Giants team, maybe I would consider. Uh, is it in? Is it in New York? It's in Dallas. It's in Dallas. Uh, you got to keep an eye on uh, Olivier Vernon if he's going to play or not. Because I, I don't think he played last game. Um, he's their best pass rusher. So. Yeah, I think I'd probably try and stream elsewhere with yeah. these if I could. I would agree. All right, let's go on to the Monday night football game. The dang match Trubisky's in Chicago against the Doug Barwins. Doug Byron. Doug Byron. <laughs> R.I.P. Yeah, I know. R. R. Other knee. The other knee. If you're like, oh, you, if you're one of those people who are like, oh, like I knew his knee was going to be hurt and he was going to get fucked. It was actually his other knee he hurt, not the one that was hurt in preseason. <laughs> no, he's got two fucked up knees. Two Doug knees. bad knee. You know what you need? <laughs> <laughs> you know what you need to be a good receiver in the league? Your knees. Yeah, for sure. Doug bad That's knee. That's what you need <laughs> to be... Good. You get a good set of need. That's what you need. Sorry. <laughs> Very sorry. All right. So um, touching on them. Uh, let's start with the Seahawks. Right <laughs> here. So okay. Russell Wilson. <laughs> you're 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 playing Russell Wilson every week. He's kind of a magician. He kind of just makes it happen. I don't know. He pulls shit out of his ass. Uh, yeah. Rushing, throwing. I don't know. He just. I don't know how he does it. With he has like no talent on his team. No line. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, Chris Carson. Uh, Pete Carroll came out and said that Chris Carson pretty much took over the starting job. Away from Rashard Penny. They're uh, talking about moving Rashard Penny to over to wide receiver. I think that was CJ Procise. Oh, CJ. Oh, pardon. Yeah, CJ. <laughs> Other P. Other P. Um, All right. What do you, how do you feel about these running backs? Uh, I think it's uh, – who are they playing? They're Bear. playing the Bears. It's a tough – Bears. Not Bears. It's a tough D. Um, I think I'd try and get away from starting both of them if I could. Um – I mean, I think they're both flex plays this week at best. Yeah, I don't think maybe there's flex a Carson, but Penny, yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think if I'm gonna flex one, it's Carson. I think Penny is someone I'm still waiting to hold and see, but I don't know. This line, they were last in like rushing yardage last year, and Russell Wilson accounted for like 50 percent of their rushing yards, and it's looking like it's gonna be somewhat of the case this year. Um, you know, just because someone's a starter, if they're in one of the worst rushing offenses in the league, it doesn't make them useful. You know, you're basically banking on some catches and a touchdown. Uh, I would have tried to avoid these two if I could this week. Um, yeah. It's like Carson, if you're in a flex play or, you know, there's no bye weeks yet. So I, I could see a lot of scenarios where you can get away from Carson. I'd almost rather start uh, Philip Lindsay, whatever his name is from the Broncos over like yeah. one of those yeah, two. Okay. Is it Philip Lindsay or Lindsay Phillips? <laughs> Philip Lindsay. Philip Lindsay. It's like Ricky Bobby. <laughs> He's got two first names. I thought names. it was Bobby Ricky. Dun, dun, dun. Anyways, uh, all right, so we're going to uh, the receivers. Baldwin's out. We don't know how long he's going to be out for. He's got two fucked up knees. Could be he broke it in a, could be a while. I mean, uh, who knows? I mean, he already said, Baldwin came out and said he wasn't going to be 100% for the whole year, you know, prior to game one. Now he's definitely not going to be 100% for the I rest like of the year. I feel like he just so. he sees Russell Wilson, like, not missing any games, and then he just is like, I can do that too. Maybe <laughs> that's what he's what – Maybe. Maybe he should have stayed know. out, you know? I don't know. So uh, I think the receivers think there are Brandon Marshall, Brandon Tyler Marshall? Lockett, and Jerron Brown. I think you could fire up Lockett and um, uh, Brandon Marshall in this week's matchup uh, as like yeah. as like a, I think they're both flex plays this week. Um, you know, Russell Wilson's like we just said, he's a magician. He's going to do his, so he's going to throw to somebody. Um, unless it's Will Disley again for 100 and something yards, and yeah, you know. I think both these receivers offer a relatively safe four this week with no Baldwin. Um, I mean, they're kind of basically the two targets outside of, you know, the running backs and tight end. And, you know, someone's got to catch the ball if Russell Wilson's going to throw it. Um, you know, who would you choose as like an upside play out of those two? So for me, um, Lockett's more of like the, the speedster down the field guy. So if, there, if a guy's going to catch a 60 yard bomb, it's gonna. I think it's gonna be Lockett, you know. But if someone's gonna catch a 10 to 15 yard red zone touchdown, I think it's gonna be Marshall. Uh, Lockett only had four targets last game. Uh, he had three receptions. He had a long bomb for a touchdown. Marshall had six targets. He had three receptions, and I think he had like a 15 to 20 yard touchdown. Something like I that. I think. I think knowing that, 
based on the running game, they're not really going to be marching up the field. So I feel like it might be a bomb throwing kind of game for them. I mean, the opportunity is going to be there. I think both these players are on the field a ton. Um, I'm not really uh, like Jerron Brown. I'm not, you know, I don't think he's anybody. He had three targets. Um, the thing with me is with them last year, they had Jimmy Graham and obviously Jimmy Graham, he didn't have a ton of catches. He didn't have a ton of yards, but what he was, he was a red zone monster. Yeah. He's a big guy. They just literally threw him the ball and he just jumped over everyone and he caught it. Marshall's six, five Tyler Lockett's five ten. That's a seven inch difference in height advantage right there. So yeah. if they're going to throw the ball to, <laughs> they're going to throw the ball to some guy and him just go and Jimmy Graham it, like how they did last year. Yeah. It's Brandon Marshall. And I mean, he looked good. He's still, I mean, I think people are sleeping on Brandon Marshall thinking that, oh, he's a bum. He didn't do good last year, but I mean, he was hurt last year. Nah, I think they just say he, oh. <laughs> I mean, he's old. He's coming off an injury plagued year. Um, but I mean, he's six five. I mean, he's been doing it for a long time. It's like six foot Groot. He's six foot Groot. No one's so. six foot Groot. <laughs> possession six, receiver. Groot. I mean, who, who do you think would be a better possession receiver out of these two right here? Uh, I think it, I think if you want to play the the safer floor this week, I think Marshall's the safer floor of the two. Um, I think the you know the the big bomb guy, big play guy is Lockett. I think Lockett has more of the upside. He ran a lot more. Once Baldwin went down, he was kind of specifically out of the slot. Um, so that might uh, open up some windows for him to make some big plays. Um, you know, it's kind of more, it's a tough decision between the two. It's kind of more of like, what, you know, what do you want? Like, I, you know, I think if you want someone to go for a massive game, I think Lockett, the, you know, is, is the big bomb guy. Uh, if you want to make sure you get those secure, those catches and, you know, more secure touchdown look upside, I think you go Marshall. Um, yeah, I mean, they paid Lockett. They they gave him a, an extension um, in the offseason. So, obviously, they want him. They like what he brings to the table in Seattle. So, I mean, maybe they find, they're finding, you know, this week in practice, they're finding more ways to incorporate him and get him the ball because obviously he's got some speed, and he, he does have that big playability to where, you know, all it takes is one 60-yard touchdown, and he makes your day in fantasy. So, yeah, and he I, mean, says, I think both these guys are flex guys, especially yeah. with the, the volume. I think the volume should be there for both these guys. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think they both see upwards of six targets in this game, you know, yeah. even seven, eight. So if you're in a double flex league, and if you were able to get one of those two, I think they're a perfect flex, too, um, in this situation. For sure. For tight end, you, you buying in the Disley hype? or uh, I mean, there's so many targets missing from the tight end position. Uh I mean, he's got to throw the ball to somebody. He's got to throw the ball to somebody. I don't know if I'd feel comfortable putting him into my lineup, but I think he's someone where if you picked him up, you probably spent some fab or waiver acquisition. So wait and see a week. Are they a team? I, I haven't looked into this. I don't know if you have. Are they a, the Seahawks a team who run a lot of two t- tight end sets? Or Because um, I, I, I did see that Disley and Vanette were on the field. They were on 58 and 51 50, percent yeah, of snaps. They were like 50, 50. So they were pretty close. Um I mean, like this week, maybe it's a Vanette who who comes out, you know, and has a yeah, big game. Yeah, that's the and thing is, right? I, I think it could be a Vanette game, possibly, or a Disley. You might just be playing gamble with these two, and it's so early in the year, we don't know who's going to be the favorite. Yeah. Um, but I think if Disley comes out and has a big target game again, he's someone where, you know, you hold even that week, and if it's you know maybe it's a week two week one or week one or two, two week fluke, you know maybe it's not. Maybe he's someone who ends up being like a. You know, a, a back end tight end one, tight end two option where in a good matchup you can play him. Yeah. Seahawks D? No. No. Probably not. No. That's a, they're not. It's so, no, it's not it's so weird. It's not the Legion of Boom anymore. It's so, I don't remember the last time I've seen the Bears favored against Seattle. I know. I yeah, that's, yeah. It's kind of weird. The times they are. Bears changing. D. Are you starting the Bears D? I think I would start the Bears D. I think, yeah, I'm dialing up the Bears good, D. I think, I think Russell Wilson's going to be running for his life, and Khalil Mack is Khalil just going to be eating. Smash. He looks like a big ass bear just Bro. out there running around. He just fucking paws dudes onto the ground. Man, that guy's so Why would get you down, get rid bitch. of him? Because uh, yeah. uh, John Good and Chucky over there. Uh, Mitchell Trubisky, uh, uh, I mean. I don't know if he's someone I want to start. Yeah, I don't know if I'm starting Trubisky here. There's just better options on the waiver wire. Yeah. You got a Keenum, you got Tyrod, Alex mm-hmm. Smith, like you were saying. Those guys, I would feel way more comfortable starting. Uh, Jordan Howard, I actually love Jordan Howard this week in this matchup. Yeah. Um, I love Jordan Tariq Howard. Cohen. Uh, Tariq Cohen is, I'm, I'm benching him as of now. Uh, Jordan Howard actually saw more targets and ran more routes than Tariq Cohen did. If you're a Jordan Howard owner, don't be disappointed by last week's performance because. He had five catches in last week last week's game. Um, that's like twenty percent of his totals for the last two years. Hundred percent catch rate, five for five. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, that jugs machine work he's been putting is paying off. Uh, I mean, if Jordan Howard is going to get three to five catches a game and he's going to get these rushing works and go on, he's going he's gonna to finish in the top ten, that's for sure. I mean, I think he has the last two years anyways. Yeah. Um, he's, he's I'm, a, I'm actually already. encouraged by Jordan Howard getting those catches last week. I mean, I think he's finished with, what, 25 catches, 27? Something like that. He's like 30, yeah, somewhere like that, 25, so he, 35 So he had, maybe. he had about a quarter of his catches in the first game. Yeah. Um, he's out there running routes, so I'm that's highly perfect. encouraged by Jordan Howard. Yeah, he was on the field for 71% of the snaps. He had 20 touches. Um, Cohen only had eight touches. So, I mean, the the knock on Jordan Howard this preseason was it, oh, Cohen's going to be the pass catcher. You know, he can't catch for shit. He's got, you know, brick hands. But, you know, all the reports in camp were that he was, you know, catching two to 300 balls, you know, every day after practice. I mean, if you put the time and the effort into something, you're going to get better at it, you know, yeah. after time, especially if you, you know, something like that. So, for them to go out there and for him to get more targets, like you said, and more receptions than Cohen, who's supposed to be the passing back, that's a huge sign right here. And if he's going to get those kind of targets right there, I, the, he's got RB1 upside for sure, yeah. 100%. You know, People are drafting him to be an RB2, but he's got top 10 upside, top 8 upside. If he's going to get – I mean, if he gets you 40, 45 catches on the he year. 40, if he gets 45 catches, he's probably going to be a top 6. Yeah, so – um, he looked good too. He's running the ball. I mean, this is going to be a good offense. I love Jordan Howard. I I, try, I made a trade for him in one of the leagues already before the season started, and, and I'm super psyched that you know after seeing that, I'm super psyched that I traded for him. Right, I have right. now, yeah. I traded Lamar and, and Alfred Morris to get him, and I'm um, I'm psyched about that. Yeah. All right. So Trey uh, Burton. Trey Burton. Uh, you know, it was it was kind of just a weird. Uh, it, that game was actually weird, like a weird for the whole passing offense. You know, they. Had the pick six. Uh, Aaron Rodgers ca- like came out of the game early. Um, he was moving in and out of like the slot, the outside. Um, he still saw five targets or six targets, I believe. Well, I think he still saw six targets. He was second on the team in targets. Um, I think it was just one of those weeks where it just uh, it was just, just a down. Didn't week. all click. Yeah, you know, it just it just didn't all click there. Uh, I'm not too panicked on him yet. Um, I think he bounces back this week against Seattle. Um, you know, I think if you have him, you're, you're playing him for sure. He's definitely one of the better options. So even with the bad week, the tight end's so thin where, you know, you're not really sitting Trey Burton. Allen Robinson? Uh, I think Allen Robinson's – This is, that, that, that Seattle defense is bad. I think it's a plus matchup for Robinson. Um, you know, he was the favorite target to go to early for Trubisky. How many targets did he have? Uh, I'm trying to look that up right now. I think now. he had like three for 49. Uh, I'm looking it up right uh, now. I'm not Three receptions sure. for 49. Just to touch on Burton real quick while you're looking that up. Uh, he had five targets. He only caught one pass. But, he, I mean, he was out there for, I don't know, he's out there for like 85% of the plays. So it's not like he was not on the field. Yeah. And like I said, that, that was kind of a weird game because they were up 20-0. to zero. They didn't really need to throw the ball too much. No. Then all of a sudden Aaron Rodgers came out, and it's like uh, I feel like they, they weren't really getting the ball. You know, it was Aaron Rodgers on the field, and they got the ball back right away. Aaron Rodgers on the field, and they got the ball back right away. So um, it's almost like they feel like they, I feel like they I have think better that game days are, are coming for Trey Burton. He's actually a tight end. If you can get him on the low, I would for sure. I mean, I was telling my buddy uh, the other day, you know, trade Cooks for Trey Burton. He thought it was crazy, and I was like, bro, just do it because I don't think Cooks is going. Uh, Jared Cook is going to sustain this the whole year. Yeah, I think Trey Burton is a better long term value for here. So. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so Alvin Robinson had four catches for sixty one yards and seven tar- on seven targets. I mean, it's not too bad. Ten points. So Allen Robinson, like when he had his good year, his his yard average per catch was a lot higher. When he had his bad year, it was his good year was I think it was around seventeen yards per catch, and his bad year it was around eleven. So if he's going to be sitting in that fifteen you know yards per catch range, I think he's in line for a better season than you would have expected. Um, you know, like I said that I think it's a plus matchup for him. Um, I'm fine. You know, if you drafted him, you probably took him in the you know fifth, sixth round. Um, I think he's wide receiver two this week. Um, he's going to be the leader in targets uh, for sure. You know, Anthony Miller was on the field for 56% of snaps. Taylor Gabriel is more of like a gimmicky glitch guy. So he's going to be the wide receiver one. Whether this is an elite passing game or not, he's going to be the wide receiver one. So he's a wide receiver two option just by volume and uh, kind of necessity in my eyes this week. Yeah, I mean, I'm not big on Allen Robinson, but like you were saying, uh, Anthony Miller wasn't really on the field. Um, Taylor Gabriel, gadget guy too. Kevin White, I don't even know, did he even 17% play? 17% is 12 snaps. Yeah, so um, he is the number one there, and we're always talking about volume and opportunity. He, he looks like he looks to be the guy who's going to get all that. I think him and Trey Burton are are the one and two receivers over there, actually. So yeah, um, yeah, I mean, flex wide receiver two, I can see it for sure. Yeah, I mean, this game could even be a little bit more. And I'm not an Al Robinson guy at all. So yeah, yeah. 
I mean, this can be more of a competitive ga- a game. Uh, you know, that, that game got out of quick, so I could see this being more of like a back and forth. Uh, First game in Chicago. I mean, Monday yeah. night, too. Uh, I think that crowd is going to be going crazy. They're probably hyped for how the team looked playing against Green Bay. They're, I know they're down. They lost that game. They gave it away. They're probably going to want to come out and, and smack Seattle, you know? Yeah. So That's all of them. Do we say Bears D? Start them. Yeah. Bears D, start them. Yeah, that's what we did. That's all she wrote, folks. That's the matchups for week two, 2018, fantasy football, average bros. These are all words. A, uh, I didn't say it in the beginning of this episode, but go check out all of our stuff. Go check out our Instagram. We've got tons of stuff on there. Oh, my God. There's so much information. Wow. And that's at average bros underscore fantasy football. Go check us out on Twitter. Uh, we'll be posting during game uh, info, stuff like that. Uh, that's uh, Average Bros FFP. Just go check out all that stuff. You can check that all that thing, all those in the description down below. If you're on iTunes, we do a full video format. Go check that out on YouTube. Um, if you're listening to us on iTunes, if you're actually if you made it this far and you're listening to all the way to right here, please just pr- give us a review. Fucking rate us on iTunes. Rate us high because. We deserve it. <laughs> uh, not maybe I don't know, but it, w- it really helps us out. Uh, it really puts our podcast forward when you, when anybody does that type of thing. So uh, we much appreciate that. So we'll be on our way. Uh, I hope you guys did well in your fucking fantasy leagues this year or uh, this first week. Um, and uh, if you listen to this whole thing, you will for sure hundred percent money back guarantee. Win your league matchup this next week. All right. If you listen this far, you're gonna <laughs> fucking win. All right. I said it here. You can fucking quote me. My <laughs> my uh, address is one zero. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, yeah. Send me anthrax. I love it, dude. <laughs> Anyways, wow. all right. We're out. Uh, that's it. That's all she wrote. We gotta right. go. Goodbye. See you guys next Goodness. time. Bye bye.